hello and welcome back to another Chief Architect lesson. Today we will jump into a new project that will be something that uh, I've been meaning to do for a while. They're real popular right now and that is uh, tiny homes. So we're going to make a tiny home in Chief Architect and uh, go through the process and learn some new steps and uh, hopefully you'll learn something from this. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the very first thing we're going to do is uh, make our exterior walls. So I'm going to grab my exterior wall tool and I'm just going to drag my walls and uh, make a rectangle. The next thing I'm going to do is adjust the size of this um, particular structure. And instead of 24 uh, feet long, we're going to make this, let's say, 26 feet. 26 feet. There we go. Better. And as far as the width goes, we're going to make it 20 feet wide. That should give us a 520 square foot living area, which is definitely categorized as a tiny home. Next, thing we're going to do is work on the outer shell of this house. We're going to make the outer shell, and then we'll work on the inside after we get that part complete. So let's just go ahead and look at where we are at this point. If I go to my camera view, I'll just do a perspective full overview, and I have just the shell right now. So we're going to put some gable ends on these walls right now. So uh, to do that, I'm going to select this wall, and I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the wall on the right also. I'm going to come down here and open the object and I'm going to go to the roof tab and just select full gable wall and click OK. And now we have gable walls on the end. A couple other things that we want to do on this show. We want to make this room taller than you might normally for a one story. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. Go to my structure and I am going to make this uh, structure 12 feet tall. Nope, not 12 inches. 12, 12 feet. There we go. And that just gave us a little bit more height there because we're gonna end up putting a loft in this thing. So uh, that extra added height is going to be important. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to um, try to give this thing a feel of uh, a bigger space than it actually is. And a common trick in, in that uh, with tiny homes is actually to, you know, just kind of open the space up by adding some windows and glass, and just kind of literally outside in. So um, we're going to do that by creating a, uh, to start with, we're going to create a dormer on the front of this house. So I'm just going to go to my roof tools up here and I'm going to go to auto floating dormer and I'm going to get somewhere near the bottom of this wall and click. I didn't get close enough, so I'm going to hit control Z. I get down here. I can move this actually. That's what I'll do. So I am going to uh, double click on this dormer and go to my walls. And for one thing, I want to make this about 40 inches. And then also, I want to um, go to my roof tab and change this to shed. Okay. And that should give me a dormer, something like that. And I'm going to do some adjustments on that dormer now. I want to kind of bring it a little bit closer to the um, bottom or to the front here. So this, I'm actually making just touch right there. Something like that. So it's kind of lined up with that wall right there. Of course, the regular roof line goes over that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dormer and I'm actually going to make it spread the width of this structure. Almost the whole width. I'll go within about two feet on each end. Um, make it if it's 26 feet so let's let's make this dormer be a measurement of i get on that measurement uh 24 feet actually we'll have two feet on each side is what i want so let's go four so 22 feet we'll have two feet uh, extra on each side and i'm just going to go ahead and while that dormer selected use my arrow tools and center it up on the structure and let's go ahead and see what we have now so, so far we have a, um, a roof line. I, I also want to change the, um, the pitch of this roof. I should have done that already. I didn't notice that till right now. And, um, and we're going to put some windows in here and some other things. So let's go ahead back. I'm going to get in my, um, my roof by clicking on build roof and I'm going to go to my pitch 
I'm going to make this a 10, 12 pitch, a little bit steeper. There's a little more height there also. And uh, let's go ahead and look at that. That already looks uh, better. That's what I wanted. I'm actually going to raise this up a little bit now that I look at it. I'm kind of winging it on some of the things on this plan because I uh, never built a tiny house before. So let's go ahead to our walls. Instead of 40, let's go back to 50. I want to see the default was 60. That gives us a little bit more height. We could put some bigger windows in here and uh, the loft is going to be on one end of this. And it's just going to kind of give it a, a bigger feel than what it actually is. So at this point, I'm ready to start working on some, uh, some of the exterior windows. And so I'm going to start with the windows up here in the dormer itself. And I'm going to go to my window tool. And I'll just kind of click somewhere in that area and uh, use my mouse orbit tool. Kind of turn that around and I'm going to click on this window and let's do some uh, modifications on this window. I'll just double click it and I don't want it to be a height of 44. It's way too tall for what we're doing here. Let's try 32. It was like a square window. Let's see what that looks like in here. That looks pretty good. I'm going to move it down a little bit. There we go. And um, that that is in a good spot, I think, right now. Uh, to adjust this uh, to this window, we're up in the attic space now. If you hit, hit the up arrow to the A, which means attic. And then I can adjust this uh, window any way I want. Um, give it next to select it. And um, I'm just going to put a series of four windows in here, one, two, three, four, and we're gonna mull them on other ones. They're gonna be butted up right up against each other. So to do that, I'm gonna, with the window selected, I'm gonna hit Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And I'm just gonna click my, um, my crosshairs right on the left edge of that window. And that will line it up just the way we want it to be. Um, same thing again, Control V again, and I'm gonna click it right there, and then Control V one more time, and right there. And when we look at our camera view, you see we have four windows now that are all lined up. And that's just going to add a, add a whole bunch of uh, kind of a whole bunch more feel of, uh, of openness inside that house. So let's go ahead and take care of the, the first floor here. We're going to um, make a sliding glass door. So to do that, I'm going to go to my door tools and just go to sliding door and I will just click right here. And what I want to do is I want to kind of line up these, um, these sliders and with these windows on the top. So what I can do is, um, let's go to the, let's go to this first floor real quick. And I'm just going to, uh, create, uh, go to 3d, create orthographic view, cross section elevation. And I'm just going to click and drag in the direction of this uh, structure. And we're just going to kind of line that up this way. So I just want those doors to be lined up over here with that, with that window. And then um, I'm going to double click on this uh, door. Let's open it up and get the door the way we want it to be. And then we'll um, do our aligning. So um, on the width, I want this to be... I want this to be wide. So almost like uh, twice what that is. So let's go 120 inches. There, that's better. Hit OK. And that gives us a nice wide door. And the other thing I want to do with this door, I'm going to open it up again, is I want to go to my options. And I want it to be um, four panels. Two on the left, two on the right. Basically, they open up each way, and uh, we're probably going to put a deck or something outside of this. It just kind of open up the space. Uh, you know, it's a common tiny home trick to make everything feel a little bit bigger than what it is. And um, I'm just going to move this over just a tad, get it closer to those windows. And that ought to be pretty good. Let's look at our uh, elevation outside, and as we can see. We have um, we have a lot of space inside there. Let's go ahead and take a look inside at where we are, what we're doing at this point. I'm going to take my camera and just kind of push in there, and let's see what we have. So we have these these doors right here, but where our dormers are, I don't see anything. That's because um, we have a ceiling over this room. So what we want to do is get rid of that flat ceiling. So to do that, while I'm on my first floor, I'm simply going to double click on this space and then go to my structure tab 
and I'm going to get rid of this flat ceiling over this room and I'm going to hit OK. Let's go back to that camera. And now you should see um, the light from those dormers kind of shining in this room. You kind of kind of get a, an idea of the amount of height we have in this room. Of course, you have that um, section right there and the interior walls. It's going to look a little odd because we have that, that shed dormer coming in. But if we didn't have that, that wall would only come to here. So it actually gives us a lot more um, space on the inside of our uh, structure. And um, let's go ahead and do some more modifications here on on uh, this project. So uh, since we're working on the outside, I'm going to start working on some um, some colors and some adjustments. These windows right here, I just noticed they're they're not where I want them to be. They're they're a little bit too low. I'm going to raise them up about let's say four inches. So I'm going to double click on one of them. And where it says Florida Top 42, I'm just going to make that 46 and highlight this, control C to copy, hit OK. And then I'm just gonna go through each window the same way. Control V to paste, OK. And that's just gonna move these windows up one by one. Probably should have got the one where I wanted it before we went and copied them, but it is what it is. We're gonna fix it um, as we go through this process. You know, this is this is what you're doing in CAD a lot of times. You, you make mistakes, you have to figure it out how to adjust them and stuff. And, this is just the process of design a lot of times. Let's go ahead and make this, um, let's change this to the color we want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at my color, uh, go to my spray paint tool. I'm gonna go to uh, colors and let me look at these color palettes and I want this to be kind of a white, like an off white maybe. Let's go through what we have here. Bone, bone is a pretty good off white color. Let's hit okay, let's try that out. Yeah, that's exactly what I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and select all these walls, turning them white. I can kind of turn around, get the back side. Now that I have that, I can uh, eye drop it and then click on this side. And I'm just going to continue to uh, rotate around. And let's go ahead and get uh, this side of it. So I eye drop the material, paint, and paint. There we go. So now we have uh, our house has a little bit of color uh, that we want it to be, not that default blue. On the um, on the roof, I actually want my shingles to be uh, shake. I think it'll be a pretty cool like Cape Cod type looking uh, house. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to uh, go to my roof tools, double click it, and I'm going to go to my materials. And then let's look at our shingles right now it says asphalt roofing black i'm going to hit select material right there and let's just type in i'm going to type in shake there we go these are the kind of shingles we want um i think the one that says shake stained is what i want hit okay hit okay now our roof uh should be shake i gotta i gotta copy and paste that to everywhere else um hit the eyedropper I get this ridge and then same with this one there we go so so far we have our color right we have our our uh, shingles right we got our door right we need to do um, some materials on these ones and um, the way I'm going to do that I'm just going to eye drop and I'll just put this bone color right back on these windows oh I don't want to do that I think I got the shingles or something like that let's just do the go to go back to the um Spray paint tool. Let's get some colors going on. So I'll type in color, and um, let's just pick a color that's also an off-white, maybe uh, antique. That's like a tan or almond. Almond looks pretty cool. Let's, let's go ahead and use that one. There we go. And again, you can use any colors you want on projects like this. It's a, whoop, I accidentally uh, painted the glass on that one. You have to be careful where your little crosshairs are. Still think I painted the glass on that one. I did. So let's go back and just hit and undo. There we go. Now I'm gonna eye drop again on this uh, this color and then get the frame and get the frame. I could do the same thing on on these doors. We kind of want them to match as well. There we go. And then um, another thing I want to do is I think I want to um, I want to put some lights in these doors. 
So I'll double click it and go to lights and there we go. Something something like that. Hit okay. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, looks a little bit better. Let's kind of just zoom out and see where we are right now. I think that uh, this point right here is a good stopping point for this project. We're going to keep on. We have a lot more stuff to do, so we're going to keep on uh, plugging away at this. But for right now, uh, we'll come back for part two, and we will continue building this tiny house. Welcome back to the tiny house project. Today, we are going to um, continue working on this project and getting it to a closer state of completion. Uh, the next thing we're going to do on this project is we're going to uh, work on the inside. You see the outside so far. We have this structure. The shell is done. We have a shed dormer in the front. And if we uh, get a camera in the in inside here, I can kind of turn around here and look at this is what our shell looks like. And we've made it so that it, the uh, windows from the dormer adds that that light, that natural light, and also some height to this space that's going to be relatively small, but we don't want it to feel as small. So that's part of our plan. Next thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to work on this space right here. And what we're going to be putting here is a, a bathroom and a kitchen and closet. And it sounds like a whole lot of stuff for right here, but that's what we're, that's what the plan is. So let me go ahead and get rid of some of the stuff I already have. Some of my cameras, uh, these two cameras will keep. Let's go back to our working plan view and let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a room on this first floor here. And I'm going to do it uh, a little bit, a little bit different technique I'm gonna use. A lot of times there's, there's, you know, let's say more than one way to skin a cat. I'm gonna use a technique that I've used before that works for me. But um, by all means, if there's a, a technique out there that somebody else uses that works better for them to make a, to make a loft, which is what we're gonna do right here, then, then then go ahead and use that technique. But for me, this works really well. If I go to my straight interior wall, my regular one, and I make a wall, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go all the way to the ceiling. And then um, I, I don't want that. I don't, I don't want it to go to the ceiling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a half wall, a straight half wall. And I'm just gonna make this space over here. Something like that. Now let's look at the camera and see what we did. So we made this space like this. Now obviously uh, our loft, we want it to be higher than three foot or whatever the default of the half wall is, but that's a good starting point. So we'll take that and we're just gonna drag that up from there and um, make sure that we get it to the height we want. So what is that height we've gotta, we've gotta determine? Also, what we probably want to do is get a cross-section elevation camera going in at this direction so we can be, um, you know, it helps you to be a little more accurate that way. So let's go to our create orthographic view cross-section elevation. I'm just going to point at that wall and let's go ahead and just take it and drag it up until we get it to a point we want it to be. So right now it's eight foot three. I think I want to go about, um, let's go about nine foot. That's where I want to be. That'll work out pretty well. I can probably go to this camera, turn it around, and I can, uh, you know, you should probably make it. We, we should just do it the right way. We'll make another cross-section elevation camera right here. And then I'll just take this wall right here, and I will drag it up. I was going to do it in the uh, in the uh, perspective, but I think this is a little bit, little bit more accurate. So let's go ahead and line those two walls up. Now I can go to... Um, I can see them a little bit off there. So I can go um, to the second elevation line and let's just type it in instead of trying to do it by, eye, by eyeballing it. Nine foot, hit enter. There we go. So both of those walls are nine foot and uh, go to the inside camera. You can see that's where we are right now. And the goal here is to put a loft on top of here. And uh, I, the, I'm going to determine my, my distances now in my floor plan view. So I know this distance. I want this to be about a four foot wide uh, hallway. So I'm just going to uh, get on that wall and type in four foot. Something like that. That'll give us a nice little hallway here. I'm going to put a door at the end of this at some point. Um, and a door to get into this room, which will be bathroom, utility room, all kinds of stuff we're going to put in here. 
But uh, before we do that, we're gonna build the top of this loft. So there's other ways you could do this. You could do a second story and mess with the heights and stuff. But I am gonna do um, what I always do when I see something that might be a little bit too difficult. Uh, I always refer to um, my poly solids. Poly solids are your best friend when it goes to Chief Architect. As far as doing stuff that is not ordinary, so you can do almost anything in a poly solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag a poly solid over this area. And I'm gonna go all the way across. And then I'm gonna take that poly solid, I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna to go to, uh, it's hard for me to do open object because I'm gonna have to double click on it because you guys can't see it, but I have a little record button down here where the open, you should hit open object, but I'm going to uh, double click on the poly solid and I'm gonna adjust the thickness. And I want this uh, to be uh, about, let's say about 10 inches. And if I put it just twice and finish floor to top, uh, we want, well, finish floor to bottom would be better. We could just put nine foot because that's, that's what our wall was and I hit okay. And let's go ahead inside that camera and see what we got. So there we go, there's our poly solid of course, the default on that is concrete. We don't want it made out of concrete, but uh, that's the starting point. And what we want to do is we want all this to be um, the same material. I can uh, just make it out of sheetrock for the moment if I want to do that. I'll just double click on my poly solid, go to my materials, uh, get in here, select material, and let's just go to uh, get out of concrete. And we just want, uh, we want sheetrock, which is, Somewhere in here. Hmm, wallboard. Yeah, there we go. Our wallboard, and I think our. Here we uh, Let me see. Yeah, that's just regular drywall. Hit OK. Hit OK. And there, now that object should be um, drywall, should match the other. There's always this little gap in between. You can always, you know, eye drop it and get it to the. Same as the drywall. I think there's a little spot over here, the same. You know, we're probably gonna end up uh, doing some adjustments later, but for now, uh, let's, let me just actually, uh, I drop this in that little space. Uh, it's a little bit better. I don't know if it's not lined up perfectly. I can go in my floor plan view certainly and zoom in and look. It looks like it's pretty well lined up. So, you know, sometimes you see those little imperfections with the poly solid. Um, I think for now we're gonna live with it. Maybe we'll do some adjusting later, but essentially uh, let's take a look at what we did. We created a loft. A loft basically is an area that we'll use above everything. And this will be like our sleeping quarters. So it won't be something that's closed in. You certainly could, I guess, close it in, but normally a loft is just open and we're gonna put some kind of a railing here uh, to make it safe. But um, up here is where you would put your mattress. Your, this is where you would, sleep up here might have some kind of a cabinet or you know somewhere to put some clothes up here but um, it's gonna be a pretty simple space so the first thing I want to do here is I want to I want some light up here so I'm gonna put a window right here on the end so let's go ahead back to um, let's go outside here and let's just add one of these windows to the end here so I'm gonna select one of them control C control V I'll just paste that window on the end here and uh, that should be uh, able, that should allow us to get some, um, some light in on, on the, uh, inside that loft. And of course we could put something, you know, some kind of a, a window covering in here. So you don't just have light coming in on you while you're, you're sleeping in the morning. And um, okay, so next thing we're gonna do is uh, we need to adjust this area right here because we're gonna put a kitchen here. And you know, one thing I just I just thought about, I never adjusted the size of this room. I adjusted this one, but I didn't adjust this side. So let's go ahead and um, I am going to, let's make this uh, 11 feet. I adjusted it and then I can also take my, um, my poly solid and go 11 feet. That should line it up now. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's pretty pretty close to lined up. I can zoom in on that and see if I can just adjust this to get right on that line. 
it's a little bit better. So um, yeah, I did that because uh, I I just I'd forgotten about that that measurement. So that's sometimes that happens. So what I want to do next is I want to put a little inset here, and this inset here is where we're gonna put our our kitchen, our tiny kitchen. So what I'll do there is I'm gonna go back to my wall tools and go to a uh, straight half wall. And I'm just gonna kind of come in here and here, connect them. And then I'm gonna make a, a closet right here. So actually 210 is pretty good. Let's go three foot though to make it a little bit bigger closet because storage is gonna be kind of important in a tiny home because uh, you can, you know, usually it's a minimalist approach when you have a tiny home, but you still have to put your stuff somewhere. So having some storage built in is important. And then what we're going to do on this wall is I'm just going to take it and I'm going to drag it to this point. So we have that inset in there. And um, then we can go back to our elevation cameras. I should be able to now grab this half wall. Let's just look, look at it in 3D real quick so you can see what happened. So we made that wall, but we did it with a half wall. So I'm going to need to bring that wall up and then on this side over here, that wall up. And then this area right here, that's where our kitchen will go. So let me go ahead and go to, um, let's go to my cross-section elevation. And I'll just take that wall, drag it, and then click on the measurement. And we want it to be nine foot, if you recall. And let's see if I get this other cross-section elevation. And it'll be harder to see on this one. Um, where is my other elevation camera? Elevation two. I think that's this one. Somewhere in here, I don't, I can't really see where that half wall is, so I'm gonna have to go back and uh, maybe I can just do it in the 3D view. Something you can do, you just drag it right up if you want to. That's better. And I can actually take this one if I go up a little bit, you won't see that. Kind of overlaps a little bit, but um, for the look we're going for, that's pretty nice. That gives us all our space in here to create our kitchen. So let's. Uh, let's let's start working on our kitchen now so uh go back to the floor plan view and i'm just going to start with some cabinets right here so let's go ahead and get a base cabinet and i'll just put it uh over in this area and that reminds me that i didn't adjust this inset for the, for the cabinets i want it to be a little bit uh this wall to go a little bit beyond the cabinets, but uh, this looks pretty good actually. So I'll start out with this one cabinet and then I am going to uh, go ahead and put a dishwasher in there. So I type in dishwasher and let's find one. Dishwasher one, let's go ahead and go with that. Click that in there. And um, next I need some more cabinets. So I'm going to build a cabinet next to this. And we want this cabinet to be type in our width of 36 and in there I'm going to put a sink so let me type in sink right here and let's just go ahead and look at what our options are on sinks probably want something that is more uh, more fitting to a kitchen so a double sink might be good uh, let's look at what other double sinks we have Double sink undermount. That's pretty good. Let's see what else we have. Um, offset undermount sink. It's kind of nice. I don't actually. I don't want that one. I'm gonna go up here and just go ahead and pick a a double sink. Not wide though, double, just a regular double sink. Let me see, like probably near the top here. Double sink right here. I'm just gonna pick that double sink and put it in there. You can always adjust later. You can see it all, it fits pretty close to um, the whole width of that cabinet. So that cabinet should probably be a little bit wider. Let me double click it and adjust it. Let's go out a couple more inches. Let's go to 38, hit okay. There we go. It gives us a little bit more width. That sink was barely fitting in there, but um, that'll that'll work pretty well. Go back to my floor plan view, and now I'm going to put another cabinet here next to this one. Um, I'm going to 
on this one i'm going to uh, double click and let's go ahead and put a a cabinet full of drawers for this one so with the cabinet open i'm going to go ahead and uh let's, let's click on the cabinet stuff in this screen and let's go ahead and adjust some of these things so uh that top drawer that top drawer we can uh, go ahead and click on that one i want this to be a six inch drawer so i'm gonna hit six inch i'm going to take this drawer and i'm just going to delete it and i'm going to add new i'm going to add a new drawer so click drawer and i want this drawer to be six inches okay and then i want to add another new drawer and let's see let's make this one eight inches okay and then finally i'm going to add a new uh another drawer i think six should do it okay and now we have all these drawers uh, one of them's eight inches three, four, six inches you might put some like some dish towels or something in this one and i can hit okay and uh let's go ahead and take a look at where we are so we have these three cabinets in place so far the next thing i need to think about here is uh, putting a refrigerator in here so i'm going to type in refrigerator i just type to start typing the letters of course it'll find it and uh, let's see what we can do we don't want something huge but um let's see what let's see what we can come up with side by side refrigerator one i don't know that this that looks like a pretty big refrigerator let's um let's go ahead and pick a top mount uh, side by side refrigerator. Actually, this isn't that big. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with side by side refrigerator too. It's up to you what you want to do with it. I just click that near the wall, and then I'm going to. Um, I like to to get that that refrigerator close to the wall, but never touching the wall because you uh, have to have some space. So I just do uh, one arrow click on each of the um, directions in the, on the keyboard. So I need one more um, cabinet to go in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my cabinet tools and pick that one and let's see what we have. So we have all of this, um, all of this done. I would still need to do some wall cabinets. So let's go back and let's kind of address that situation. So the wall cabinets, um, I'll start on this end, click one cabinet here. I'm gonna click on over the sink and I will just kind of drag that over to fill the whole distance of the sink. I'll get another wall cabinet right here and one right here. And then I'll also put two cabinet or one cabinet over the um, refrigerator and I'll adjust that one. I'll adjust that one a little bit. Uh, so let's see what we have. I think I wanna put it up a little bit to give a little space under the refrigerator automatically. Um, spaces it but it's really not that much space so i like always like to put a little bit extra there and um so yeah now we have a um now we have our uh, kitchen done you know and then i can look at this and say well maybe we maybe we want to pull that loft up or down or maybe we want to pull our cabinets up make them full length cabinets do we have enough space in this loft you know we'll we'll make that determination because i'm kind of building this on the fly so um I think at this point, I'm going to call this a day. We'll do some adjusting the, on the next, the next episode of Tiny Home. And uh, thanks for watching. Come on back for the rest. Well, hello. and Welcome back to part three of the Tiny Home build. Um, at this point, we have our, our loft complete and we have a kitchen put in. And now, uh, I think I alluded to it in the last video, I want to do some adjustments. Like anything you're doing in CAD or architecture where you're developing stuff, a lot of times you look at something and then you decide, you know what, I, I don't like this. I want to I want to change it a little bit. And that's the case here because I noticed this loft. And of course, in the loft, you're already, um, you're already hurting for some height in here because you have the, the angle of the roof coming in on your head and stuff like that. So I noticed that when I put the cabinets in, that I have a pretty good amount of space here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring this loft uh, height down since the, it's only really gonna uh, affect this hallway here. 
uh, in the bathroom as far as the height of the ceiling. And we can still bring it down and it will still give a, a nice effect. Um, but I'm going to bring it down so that we get more height in this loft. So to do that, what we're going to do is I'm going to go to um, a cross-section elevation. Let me get rid of my cameras and just kind of start from scratch with my cameras right now. We're in our uh, working plan view right now. And what I want to do is I want to create a cross-section elevation camera. To do that, go to 3D, create orthographic view, cross-section elevation, and then just point in the direction you want. Now, when I do that, I see a few things. But for one, I'm going to select this wall that's right behind these cabinets, and I'm just going to bring it down to a point where it's sitting right on top of those cabinets. And I could do that with this next wall over here. And I can probably just type it in actually. So I'm gonna put in, uh, I wanna say eight foot is the height I want it to be. So let's just go with that. Uh, I think, let me see what I got. Yeah, okay, there we go. Eight foot for that wall. And this wall, I think I'm gonna have to get the other elevation camera to get that one, that's, that's fine. Uh, I'll just create another elevation going this direction. Make sure I can get that wall. I believe this is the one that's nine two right now. So let's hit eight foot. And I think this wall right here, the same thing is at nine two. Let's go eight foot. And there we go. Now we can take this slab. Um, if I if I move my um, let me move this tool command by the tool panel because. The, when I'm recording a video, it's right in the way of where um, where my tools are. So let me, let me try this one more time. There we go. I'll just move it up over here for now. You guys don't have to do that, but I have to do it to, to open up some stuff. And I'm just going to hit next. And I'm hoping to get to this poly solid right here. Yeah. Someone's going to click on it. Someone's going to get it. Someone's going to doesn't. That's all right. We'll go, uh, we'll go ahead and come back in here. Maybe I can get it this way. Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to drag it down. Uh, poly saws will give you a good, um, a good uh, height measurement. So uh, I'm going to come back over here. Let's just get a regular camera and let's just see what we're looking at right now. So what I've done is I brought that down. Brought that down uh, a little bit to eight foot instead of nine foot. It gives us an extra, I think I was actually a foot and two inches, about 14 inches more height. That makes our loft a lot nicer. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, take these uh, cabinets and kind of bring them up to match up with, um, get a better angle on that so you can see. I'm gonna move these cameras, uh, these, these cabinets up, these custom cabinets as they were, uh, up to the top, bottom of the, Poly solid, and I think I did that one too much. There we go, and there we go. So now we've basically adjusted our the height of our um, of our loft, and I filled up the space with the cabinets, um, and we have a little bit more space. The next thing we want to do is I'm going to put some kind of a rail up here, uh, just kind of for safety features. You would normally have something like that on a loft, so we're going to definitely want to add that. So to do that, what we're going to do is go back to our um, working plan view. And whoops, I don't know what happened here, but it looks like this wall right here. I'm gonna, I guess I'll delete it. I'm going to put a wall through that, uh, through the wall over here. Didn't notice that before. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to draw a railing. So we go to railings and a railing is like just like a wall, except for it's different materials. So if I did a railing right here on the, and I'm on the first floor, it's just going to put the railing right on the bottom and then it doesn't really let you adjust the height. So a little trick is to go up to the attic and I'm going to make a straight railing right across here. It's going to give me a message that says, don't do that. You're an attic floor. You don't want to do that. So I'm just going to hit OK anyway. And I'm going to come back over here to my um, cross-section elevation. Oh, wrong one. And then you can see we have this, this railing, but it's sitting up here, and I want it down here. So what I want to do is click on it, then click on that measurement, and I'm going to type in 0 and hit Enter. Sometimes it cooperates, and sometimes it doesn't. Right there, it didn't. So let's try this again. Type on that. I'm gonna try. Let's try one inch and see if I can get it to move at all. I can't get it to move. So let me pause this and make sure I'm doing it right. I think I just had to uh, click it in a different spot. So see how I clicked over here and you these measurements, and I clicked on the left side of it. I got a different measurement. When I did that, I type in zero inches and hit enter. 
it come. I've got to get just the right spot to get this. You see the measurements will kind of change when you get the right spot. There it is. See how the measurements are different? I've got to get right on here and make sure I'm on that railing. And when I hit here, I'll hit zero inches and hit enter. And it brings that railing right down to where we want it to be. So let's go ahead and look at that in the camera view. And uh, there's our railing. Of course, it's not in the right spot. I need to move it back a little bit. So I'll go into my, um, into my, I'm in the attic view right now. I also have uh, my reference layers on. If you don't know how to do that, it's over here on the right. If you click it, uh, it turns on these little red lines. And the red lines kind of show you these are the walls below. Now, I want this railing to be kind of lined up with this refrigerator. It's kind of like right there or this wall right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And that should be right about the same spot. Now, what I could do is I could take this railing and just drag it all the way across. And then I could use the brake. I could break the railing here and here. So I'm going to make an opening here. We're going to make like a ladder to go up here. But if I do that, it does some weird stuff. It takes half of the railing and shoots it up in the air. And then it's hard to deal with. And anyways, I've learned uh, the hard way not to do it that way. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, First, I'm going to take this rail and bring it all the way here because that's where I want to stop. Then I'm just going to take this. And I'm going to hit Control C, Control V, copy paste, put it right here. And then I'm just going to kind of drag this shorter. And I'm panning by pushing the button down in the middle of my mouse. And I'm just going to kind of move this railing over here. Uh, when I get to the wall, I have to hit Control to override that and get on top of that wall. And I want to move down this way uh, a little bit because I want to be... Uh, right up to the edge of that wall and then I'm just going to drag it all the way to this wall and let's go ahead and see what we got and it looks like I went too far so let's go back here again yeah I want I meant to make I meant to make it come over to this side of the wall that was my fault let's try again there we go so now we have this opening right where we want it and um looks pretty good we're going to uh, change this up a little bit um by adjusting some materials let's go ahead and do that now Okay, so I, 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 the way the railing is right now, it really very much looks like a deck railing like you might see on a, a deck outside. So we don't, I don't want that. So I'm going to do some adjusting. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one on the end and open it up and let's do some adjustments. So let's click on where it says uh, Newell's Ballasters. And first of all, on the height, it says 36. That's a code thing. But we're gonna go down to uh, 28 uh, inches. Whoop, I don't have to hit inches, I had it. To bring it down a little bit um on my width i think that i think it was at four because i've already been playing with this a little bit yeah let's make this two if you haven't already done that and then um, on my spacing i want to bring this all the way up to uh, 14 inches something like that and let's go ahead and take a look at that you have a very different look to it but you see uh it looks more appropriate for what we're doing this loft and so let's go ahead and do the same thing um, to this one, to this end. So I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna go to my Newell's balusters. 28 inches was the height, uh, two inches width, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna go 14 inches between. That should be okay, let's take a look at that. All right, uh, and we have a much different looking um, much different looking railing. I can bring it down. I don't need that space right there. Also, I can do that. Let's take a look if we, if we do that maybe. So right there, if I go new with balusters, um, that's not there. It's on, let's see, structure, general. Somewhere in here is the height. You can have, um, you can choose this distance right here. Let's go down here. Uh, there's raised bottom. If I uncheck raise bottom, hit OK, it brings it all the way to the all the way over. So something like that. I think that is much better looking. So let's do the same thing on this one. Uh, it was on rail style, and I just come here and uncheck raise bottom, hit OK. And now our rail looks a lot nicer, except for one thing. I don't like that it's this wood. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it black, like it's made out of metal. So let's go ahead and open it up again, and let's go to our materials and all this stuff is honey so i almost have to do do them one at a time it's going to take a while uh so i just go into materials and i just want to type in uh metal see what we have here and i think that brushed black brushed metal is what i want or let me see what the rough 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. Metal, metal rough. That'll give it kind of a flat appearance. That's fine. And that'll just keep on going through these. Um, type of the same thing. Metal. And then I will just go scroll down to uh, black metal rough. And then come over here to this one. Go into each material. And just choosing the same uh, metal material. Sorry, just had an announcement there. I had to pause for because um, I'm recording at school. That's the way it goes. So let's go uh, metal, black metal rough again on this one. And uh, we don't have a panel, but we have a rail. So I can hit select the material on that one. In fact, I think that um, I might have chosen some, chose something I didn't need to do, but that's quite all right. Hit OK. There we go. That should make it all that black material. And then I can do the same thing here. Um, just open it up. And I'm going to go to my materials and baluster. I want to be, let's go metal. And I want it to be this black rough metal. Go, hit OK. And then I want, uh, let's see, the null. I'm going to do that one. Uh, metal and I'll just scroll down to black metal rough okay and then I want to I don't have panels but let me do rail I'm gonna type in metal and I will scroll down to black metal rough again okay that should do all of it I hit okay and now uh, let's take a look this is much more appropriate of a railing, I think, than what we had before. So I, I kind of like the look of this a lot better. I like the way our loft is coming together up there. Um, so another thing I, I'm gonna point out to you here real quick is if you go to your um, rendering techniques and you go to physically based, gives you kind of a different look. Uh, the lighting looks a little bit different, looks kind of cool. If your computer can keep up, this is a cool way to look at stuff, I think. You know, it's not as bright, but uh, it gets you an idea, you know, the way things look. Of course, I haven't done any materials or anything in here. It's just plain sheetrock and stuff. So, but um, just to point that out while I'm doing that, I'm going to go back to the light uh, view while I'm doing actual building and stuff. But yeah, that was, um, that was how we do that. The next thing we need to do is we need to build a, um, a way to get up here. So let's go ahead and tackle that. Now. Okay, after further review, I was going to put a ladder here. And of course, I'm trying to stick by my um, policy that I don't do anything that's not free. So I'm gonna have to get back to the ladder thing. We might have to make our own ladder and uh, there's definitely not enough time left in this video to do that. But we can definitely uh, do some other stuff. Let's go ahead and um, get off some of the, I have so many elevation cameras now. Uh, here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and deal with some other stuff we got to do right now. So one of the things I need to do is I need to do some windows. So I'm gonna get on my window tool and I can actually do this in the floor plan view. Let me go back to the first first floor. Let's go ahead and choose window and I'm just going to put a window there and it's gonna be relatively wide the window. So I'm gonna make it a, the width instead of 32, let's make it like, um, let me see. Yeah, let's go about uh, 42 inches go and I also want to put a light on this um, go in the other direction there we go and I'm gonna hit okay and let's go ahead and look at this see what we have here of course I gotta do some material stuff um, to this but we'll get there uh, I can eye drop off of this right now and uh, just kind of push that up that way we don't have to do it later and I'm just going to take that, that window and I'm going to do um, go back to plan view and I'm going to take three of them and put them together. So with this window, I'm going to select it, control C, control V. I'm just going to click right on the edge of that window so it's all together. Control V again, click right on the end of that window. And now we have all of the windows together. Um, let's go ahead and um, see if we can get that centered on this house so I'll take this one in the middle and go to my um, center tool see if I can go right down the middle Let's like that there we go of course it adjusted those windows a little bit now that I got this one in, in the middle right um, I can adjust these other ones just kind of move them in this one I need to kind of move it over a little bit I think Something like that 
There we go. Now they're pretty good. I think I got it right. Yeah. No, this one over here is too far over. Go to my um. Here, let's get the camera. So I'll go to that physically based, so I don't get that lighting, that blue, that weird lighting thing I had going on here. So I just want these windows to be um in the same spot there. Well, I think I moved it up a little bit in height. That was not intentional. There, uh, and this one, let's see. Let's see if I can get this one. Maybe the problem is this one might be in the wrong spot. I think what I'm doing is I'm dragging that window. Let's go ahead back to plan view and see where we are. So let's go ahead and this window is, yeah, I think I got it right now. Okay. So at least three windows. Um, I don't know what's going on with this one. I think I, I'm not really sure what I did there. But um, I can do this always, of course. I can delete it. And knowing that my middle window is where I want it to be because it's centered, I'll double check by centering it again, the middle window. Then I can just um, delete delete these other windows. And since I got this one first, you know, center it right here, like that the center tool. And then what I can do from there is I can take this window, control, not the window label, but the window itself, control C, control V, copy, paste. And then I'll just uh, control V, paste, and I'll just do the same thing. Just cl click right on the edge. And now our windows should be good. There should be three of them and they should be centered. That's what we wanted to do. Very good. Um, next thing I want to do is, again, with these tiny homes, we want to have like lots of natural light coming in to make it feel bigger than it actually is. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another one of these windows, only this time I'm going to use a relatively small window. Uh, I can take, I'll just use the default right now, and I'll just put a window somewhere in there. And I am going to um, rotate this around, go to my mouse orbit, and uh, I just definitely, I definitely want that window to be, um, to be located, uh, centered on the roof line. If I could do that, click right on the roof line. There we go. And then I also want to double click on that window. I want to make it small. I don't want it to be very big. So let's go somewhere along the lines of like 28 by 28. And let's put a light in there, a, a vertical light in the middle. Go to lights. I'm gonna go across one. Okay, something like that. Yeah, I just wanted like a little window up there, and um, I'm also gonna. I'm also going to uh, select that material off of that window and click in there to get that done with. And that is pretty much. That should wrap, be a wrap for this particular lesson. So we put some windows in the end. Um, our loft is looking good on the inside of this uh, building. We've got a railing on there now. We've got our loft height right, our kitchen right. So we're really making some progress. And um, at this point, I'm going to call it a stopping point. Well, hello, and welcome back to part number four of the tiny house build. Today, we will uh, get into some other interior aspects of the home, like this big empty room. Probably do a little bit of interior design work today, actually less architecture, more interior design. But we're also gonna do some structural stuff. For example, I want a, um, a door at the end of this hallway, probably a door to get in the bathroom that's gonna be down there. And also um, probably a couple of windows uh, over here. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on that. First thing I wanna do is address this empty space right here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to look up couches and see what we have. And the couch that I want, I've already looked through here. And you might notice that there's downloading um, catalog items. This is, I'm working on a snow day here in Texas, so I'm not using my typical uh, recording setup. So if anything goes a little weird, that's why. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this, this sofa. I've already looked through a, a ghetto sofa. Go to, um, to, right under the window. Of course, I'm gonna turn it around. Remember that arrow means that's the front of that object. So you always want the front of that object facing the direction it's supposed to be. And I'm gonna double click on that sofa. And I think 80 is really not long enough. I'm gonna adjust this to 97 inches. And of course, you know, if we're talking custom furniture, you would just find a couch more more suit this space. But um, 
I if it didn't make it, yeah, it did make that change. But um, in this case, we just have to, we're, we're really confined to whatever sofas are in here if we're gonna go in the free route. So uh, I'm just gonna use one that kind of sort of works for me and, and go from there. So I have that sofa and um, let's go ahead and look at it. So it is a pretty plain looking sofa. So another thing we can do interior design wise is we can go ahead and grab a couple of pillows. So I'm just gonna type in pillow. And I think the one I found was called Plump Pillow. Let's go ahead and use that. So I will go to my um, my working plan view, and let me just kind of uh, just kind of take this pillow. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit. Uh, instead of being a 12 inch pillow, let's go instead of 12 by 12. Let's just kind of grab this and make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go like 16 by 16. The depth is fine. I maybe go a little bit bigger. Let's go seven for the depth. And let's go ahead and hit okay. I don't care about the aspect ratio. And I just gave a big, bigger pillow than what they offered. I'm gonna kind of turn it. And then when we go to our full camera, what's probably gonna happen is it'll be floating in the air, uh, which it is because it, it won't uh, overcome this invisible block outside of this couch. So what I have to do is I have to hold, select the pillow, hold the control button, and then just kind of push down until we get this pillow where we want it to. And there we go. Now it's at the right at the right height, and um, I can just kind of move this a little bit. We don't want to overlap anything using my keyboard, actually. So I'll take that pillow. I actually want to turn it a little bit more, yeah, something like that. And then I'm going to hit Control C, Control V, copy and paste it. Now it already have that angle that we want, and I'm just going to kind of move over a bit and move back a little bit, something like that. Then I could take uh, these two pillows and hold Shift to can. Uh, to select both of them. I'm gonna hit Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and I'll just paste them somewhere over here. Then all I have to do is just kind of rotate them around and back a little bit. There we go. And then I'm just gonna take them individually. I want this one to be the furthest back. And if this isn't perfect, that's fine because that's kind of how it would really be with pillows. You wouldn't, they wouldn't be you know perfectly uh, aligned with each other. Let me see how this one is. Yeah, the front, I think I don't have enough angle. Uh, I'm gonna do a little more angle on this one. There we go. And then I'll do a little more angle on this one. Something like that and put it in. Let's go ahead and look at what it looks like. That looks a lot better to me. It's kind of fills in that space a little bit more. More, it looks like there's a gap in those pillows. That's gonna bug me. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see what we can do about that. I don't know why there's a gap in the pillows because it looks like they're touching each other. So maybe it's an illusion or something. I don't know, but um. At any rate, I'm just going to leave it there for now. It looks like it's okay. So now that I have somewhere to sit, I'm going to start filling this area. Now remember, this is a tiny home, so we're uh, space is at a premium. And so we want to use our space very wisely. So what I'm going to do is kind of do a lot of built-in things. Like I'm going to build in some, some cabinets over here, but it's like a bookshelf or something like that. And I'm also going to build a, a cabinet. And then I've seen some uh, pretty cool things on tiny homes where they have actual table that will fold up into the cabinet and can kind of lock in place. And that just opens up the space for you when you're not using the table to, to eat at. So um, let's go ahead with that in mind to kind of build something uh, similar to that. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is just build a base cabinet over here. So I'll just uh, get to my plan view and I will just go to that bottom corner over here, um, get back on my cabinet tools. I want a base cabinet. I'm gonna put it over here and I'm just gonna turn this around. I don't want it um, facing that one. I'm gonna face it this way. And then I want a 36 inch uh, cabinet. So I can drag it manually. And then let's go ahead and open that up. And what I want that to be is, I don't want it to be a closed cabinet like that. I wanna uh, click on it. And these doors, I wanna delete them. I'm gonna delete these doors. Something like that. And see how we have these shelves right here? That's kind of what I wanted. I want it to be kind of like a, an area to put stuff in there, like, a, like shelves. And, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wall cabinet right on top of that. I'm going to build it exactly the same width. So I'll just drag it out. You can go in and type it in if that's what you want to do, but um, not what I had in mind. I'm going to go ahead and click on these doors. I'm going to click on them and hit delete. And now we just have shelves there that are, that are exposed. And let's go ahead and look at what we made there. So basically um, we made a, a cabinet that has some you know, shelves right on it and I'll slide it back on top of that one. And now we just kind of have built-in um, bookshelves. And that's kind of what I had in mind on this. Um, I don't think, I think I'm gonna build them a little bit. Um, yeah, that, actually that's pretty good, that's pretty good. So we'll we'll go ahead and stick with uh, that for our 
for our bookshelves and the next thing i want to do is i want to build another cabinet this will be more of a storage cabinet so let's go to our base cabinets go to my plan view uh, base cabinet right here and this uh, particular cabinet, I'm going to drag it all the way to 48 inches. I'm going to have a nice wide cabinet right here. There we go. And um, I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. And just to make sure it is what we want it to be. And yeah, I want wide, just wide doors to open up. This is going to be a nice wide cabinet. Lots of storage in this. Um, we might want to put, uh, I don't know if we can put two drawers in there. Let's go ahead and see if we can do such a thing. Um, let's see if that's an option. Uh, drawer double drawer yeah that's what we want so let's click here and let's delete it and then let's uh go right here and let's add new and this could put double drawers i never tried to do this before so hopefully it works item height let's go like six inches okay there we go that's what i wanted so i've got two doors side by side on top of the cabinets beautiful so let's go ahead and as we go along we'll just keep on taking a look at uh what we have of course, I always like to come up here to my, to my, um, what do they call it? The mouse orbit camera. And then I can kind of move around in here, um, make sure everything still looks good. Now, what I have in mind next is to um, put a window right in this space right here. So let's go ahead and select our window tools and I'll just put it right here. And then I'm going to have to do some adjustments on it. Of course, I need to move over. Don't want it in the way of that cabinet. And of course, this is not the way you would design something. You would you would build your cabinets around the windows, but um, we're not really doing it that way. So that's okay. Um, as long as you understand the process, that's what's important. So I'm going to go ahead uh, with that window. And I definitely want some lights in there. I want to kind of match what um, the other windows look like. So I'm going to hit OK. And then again, I have to I have to go outside to fix that later. But I'll just, I'll just wait and, and fix all the windows at once. Now that bugs me that this... Um, that these bookshelves aren't the same height. So I'm just going to kind of drag that up and do something like that. And um, next, uh, I'm going to take that, that window and let's just go ahead and center it on this cabinet. There we go. That looks a lot nicer. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a, um, a tall cabinet here. And I, I want to say, um, let's go to base cabinets. I don't know if there's a if there's a full length cabinet yet. Let's go full height cabinet, and I'll go to my plan view and go full height cabinet. Put it right there. And uh, what I want to do with that cabinet is I want to make it wide enough that it would be for a table. We're gonna put a table that folds up to this. Let's go ahead and double click on it, see what we're looking at. That's what it looks like now. So our width, the 24 won't be enough. Let's go like 36. That's pretty good. And then uh, what I want to do is um, I'm going to uh, take the this area right here, these doors up here, and I'm going to delete them. And then on this, I'm going to um, move that height down to about the height of what a um, table would be. 32 looks pretty good. Something like that. So we just have the cabinets that, that open right there, and these are all, all shelves to put stuff on. So I'm going to hit OK. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we did. It looks something like that. And then my idea here is I'm going to make a table that will come out from this point right here and it'll have the support and that whole thing would fold up into there, which is a pretty common uh, tiny home technique. While I'm at it, I can take that window, control C, control V, and I'll just copy it and put it right here. And I want this window to be, you know, kind of um, in between that space right there. It looks like I spaced it pretty well. I'm not going to worry about that anymore and then let's go ahead and make this table so like with anything that um that is unusual in a in a chief architect what you can do is you could just um you could just uh use polysolids to make anything you want one other thing that's bugging me is this i'm gonna bring this height down to uh that window so they're all the same height i think that looks a lot nicer Okay, so next thing, uh, next matter of business, let's use a poly solid to make this table that I keep talking about. So if I go to my poly solids, I'm gonna go to a polyline solid and I'm just going to click and drag out from that um, cabinet, right about that spot. And of course we have to use our imagination a little bit that there will be hinges under there. But let's go ahead and double click on this poly solid. Uh, at this point, it's one inch thick. I'm gonna make it like two inches thick. Um, finish floor to top. Uh, well, I'm going to go about 
let's go 35 and see what that looks like because uh, I have a 2 inch thickness it'll be about 33 I think that'll be good let's see what that looks like in the uh, camera view something like that um, yeah, I think I would go a little bit higher on it um, just double click let's go 30 actually 35 should be good actually what we should do is move that cabinet down a little bit so let's just go to 34 for this there we go and then on this cabinet let's take these um these doors and um let's move it down a little bit because it's got that space in there let's go 30. that moved it down a little bit and, and maybe even a little bit more let me double click it again so instead of uh 30 let's go 28. i'm just adjusting it to, to meet where that because i want that counter the the, the um table itself to be at a certain height so that looks pretty good imagine we have hinges built in under there and this would just flip up into here now of course the poly solid is materials it defaults to concrete we don't want a concrete table that would be a lot of fun to flip up wouldn't it so let's go to select material and i'm going to um I'm gonna type in wood uh wood hit enter and here's all my woods and i can just kind of go through here i want um so many options i want something just dark kind of a dark almost like a black uh birch ebonized that looks pretty cool let's go ahead and do that i'm gonna hit okay birch ebonized and then yeah now it's got like a cool you know dark color to it um the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use a poly solid to be like the support piece and with my in my imagination i have this thing flipping up and then the support piece is also hinged to flip underneath there so that uh so the whole thing will flip up and you can um, you know, attach it that way, open up the space. So let's go to our uh, working plan view. I actually didn't even adjust the size of this table. I think I want it to be six foot. Let me go ahead and do that and move this part out. Sometimes I forget to do those sorts of things and there's nobody here to remind me. So let's go ahead and go over to Polysauce again. I am going to click and drag and do a support right about there. And what I want to do is I want to make the support um, let me see thickness let's go 30 i think we were like 32 to the bottom of that and yeah, let's try that let's see what that looks like okay i don't know what i did there yeah that's right there okay so let me make sure i'm doing this yeah okay i don't have any i think it's in the ground so my height isn't isn't correct yet let me do that first oh yeah finish floor to top let's go ahead and look at this first real quick i'm gonna double click on it so it says finish floor to top 34. So we want finish floor to top of this, this uh, support thing to be 32 because we want it to be underneath. So I'll hit finish floor to top 32. And we go hit OK. And that should be better. That's more like we want. I'm going to double click on this. I, I could just, if I'd use a painter, I could use a spray painter. A lot of people think, well, I could just take this and, and I can eye drop. Um, this material go there but all that's going to do is take the color like the dark color and put it on concrete so we don't want to do that we want to go in here to our materials and let's go ahead and um, go back to our woods go to wood and if i recall i want ebonized something or other ebonized what was it birch ebonized that's it hit okay 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 there we go and then there's our support. I think I want this thing not to be as wide as the table, maybe a little bit narrower. So I'm gonna click on it and uh, let's just, let me see, I'm just gonna drag it in. A little bit, something like that. Let's go ahead and look at it now. There we go, something like that. I think that's good. So imagine this thing being able to flip up. This thing maybe has some kind of locking mechanism when you flip it down. And I don't have any chairs or anything yet, but you get the idea of that. So uh, the next thing we're gonna do, I think I'm kind of, kind of happy with this area right here. I am gonna go to the next thing I wanna do, which is put a door at the end of this wall. So let's go to our plan view real quick. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, move down, and I'm gonna put a door right here at the end of this, um, this hallway. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a door will be a three foot door because exterior i'm gonna double click on that door and let's just see what our options are i don't want to use the default uh let's go to um a glass panel something like that would be nice real simple hit okay 
And uh, let's look and see what that looks like on the inside. Yeah, like a nice glass door that just kind of, you know, again, these tiny humps gives you more light. Now, what I imagine is you might have louvered um, shades built into this door or something so that you can open it up and, and enclose it. So, you know, uh, you want some privacy at night, you can close, you know, not let everybody see you, but at the same time, you can see if I zoom out a little bit, because I have all this light in here, this place doesn't seem that, it is small, it's a small space, but it doesn't feel as small because we've got all that ceiling height and uh, we have that loft and we have all this natural light coming coming into here. So uh, at this point, um, I'm at about 17 minutes. I'm gonna call this another part to this video and uh, I will continue and we'll start working on that. Uh, we've got to the point now where we have the interior uh, living space kind of looking pretty good. We have a dining area, a kitchen area. We have a loft up here. Still have to figure out how to get up there. And uh, we have a seating area. We have some storage here, some windows, and we have a hallway that leads to a room on the left that doesn't even have a door yet. So today we're going to talk about uh, what's going to go on in that room itself. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and come back and let's talk about this space right here today. And this space is going to be used for a bathroom and for um, probably like a smaller closet and a little uh, room uh, its own room for a toilet and uh, somewhere we do laundry so let's take our all those things in this space right here first thing we're going to do is i'm going to i looked up some washer and dryer so i'm just going to use this one which is kind of a front loading deal and i'm going to put two of them right next to each other and these are basically representing uh you know washers and dryers that are front loading machines um, I can probably take both of them, select them both, holding shift, of course, in between. And I'm going to move them away from the wall a little bit because you know, we can't have stuff right up against the wall because of plugs and stuff like that. A lot of times people do that in CAD and put it right up against there. And it's really not realistic. So we'll try to fix that, even though not everything we do is perfect. We'll try to do a good job where we can. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to come over here and do a straight half wall. And I'm going to do that wall somewhere over here. And the reason for the half wall is, if you remember, uh, let us go ahead and go back to this full camera. When we uh, when we did this uh, loft right here, we built it with half wall so we could use a poly solid to build this kind of platform up here. And if I use a regular wall, not a half wall, it'll go all the way to the ceiling and then we'll have all kinds of issues. So we're going to stick with the half walls. So what I'm going to do next with the half wall is I'm just going to use my um, uh, a different camera. I'm going to make another camera view inside this bathroom we're going to be in here a while so might as well make one of those and i'm just going to take that wall and drag it up i'm gonna to have to hit the next button and uh here we go i'm gonna drag it up too close to where it needs to be on top of this platform and then uh, i can go back to my plan view um, i'll go ahead and right here next to the camera is a cross-section elevation camera this is what we use we want to be a little more accurate you can see this is where the half wall we uh we just made was i have to hit next to select it but you see it kind of it's kind of going into this um into this poly solid slab now we've got it pretty even but we want to make sure looking at our camera view um let me move this camera view over here for a second so this camera view right here uh, it looks good we can't see any problems here if i look at this camera view i also can't see any problems here so that wall should be in a good spot right now next thing we want to do is go to our camera view and we want to put a door in here but the problem with putting a door in here it does some weird stuff like um it leaves a space above it because it's a half wall so let's go ahead and put a door and i'll show you what i mean by that so here's our door but you can see what's going on there it just kind of puts this this weird space above it so i got it I got a plan to kind of um, help with that and let's see how that goes so i'm going to instead of a door put a doorway right here you see it does the same thing uh, with that uh, let me go to the next we select the doorway uh, select space there we go i'm gonna go ahead and open object of the doorway i'm gonna change it from doorway to a hinge door hit okay and now um, you notice that uh, what it did was it put a door in, but it didn't um, you know, make those white uh, moldings all the way on the side of it. So um, let me go open it again. Uh, let's go slab, let's go to default. I think it's a little nicer looking. Hit okay and see if that still works out for it. It did. So now we just have the space up above this, this door. So we just kind of tricked the, 
tricked it really we we put a half wall then we put a doorway in then we put a door in the spot and this gave us this space up here so what do we do about the space up here we're gonna come in here i'm gonna go to my poly solids and of course poly solid is my go-to for any time there's some weird thing in chief architect that you need to overcome so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna drag this out and go right to the edge of that doorway area then I'm going to click on it. And of course, I'm going to have to go to next and next again. And that's the, now I see the poly solid. You see the outline of it. Matter of fact, let me go over just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. I uh, was well, selected. I'm going to go ahead and hit open. And I'm going to do a couple things. For one, uh, I'm going to go 24 inches. I think that's about how high it needs to be. Probably too tall, but we can work from there. And finish floor to the bottom. I'm going to go about... 70 let's go 74 inches let's hit okay and let's go ahead and look at our camera and see what we did there i think this is going to kind of get it in the ballpark but of course you can see it's too low so what i want to do is i just want to kind of slide that up and slide it up on the camera view and i'm going to do a cross-section elevation here and this is going to get us a little bit closer to what we need to be i'm gonna keep on going up until kind of above the door and then i'll kind of come down and get right to the edge of the door something like that this of course should come right to here let's see what we got and now we have a pretty decent looking uh solution there let me make sure i didn't get it all as they say cattywampus i didn't i'm gonna click on it next next and i'm gonna open up this this poly solid which of course we all know that poly solids always start out as concrete we don't want a concrete piece in our wall so i'm just going to type in drywall well let me type in the whole word drywall select okay select okay select okay and we come back here that looks pretty good i do notice this little spot right there on the left i don't like it so let's go ahead and go next and I think it's because I have this space right here. So let me just, let me do that. Let me overlap it and see what that does to us. Yeah, I cleaned it up. Now you can't see it anymore. So it looks like everything worked out for us. So that is a wall. And in inside that room, um, we can see we have, we have right now, we have some uh, washer and dryer. I also have room to put some kind of storage stuff and stuff like that in there. But we'll get that to, back to that in a moment. Uh, it's time to deal with the rest of this bathroom. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to do the same deal on putting a toilet over here. So I'm gonna put a little room for this toilet to go in. So I'm gonna type in toilet and let's see what we have for options. Now, a lot of times in these tiny homes, they are on trailers and they use compost and toilets. So why don't we just stick with that theme, even though that toilet is a little bit bigger than normal. I'm gonna move it away from the wall a little bit. Again, that's a common cab mistake to you know, have it right up against the wall. And then I'm going to have to get on my half walls again, and I will drag this out and drag this over. And then let's go ahead and finish that up. And we might have to do some adjustments on it because of a doorway we're going to put in it. But uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and um, I don't need this elevation camera anymore. I don't like to make too many camera views at the same time. So get a new new cross-section elevation. And this time we're going to point in this direction towards that toilet. And you can see uh that is not our half wall so we hit the next button to select the half wall and i'm simply going to drag up get it lined up with other half walls that's pretty good if i look over here um let me rotate around just now of course we're um i have to zoom in a little bit now we're working in this area there we go and i, I seem to finish that wall as well so i will need another cross-section elevation camera this time it will go this direction and I should be able to see that half wall I do. It's right here. But of course, you have to hit the next button until you get on it. There we go. You can see it's lower. So we're going to drag that up and get it lined up with this. Looks like these are all a little bit off. I, I could try my best to get it as close as possible. That looks too high. It doesn't make that much difference. It's kind of in inside that. Um, I'll do this other one. If, I, if it'll let me get it. Because I'm inside that... Um, that poly solid that is uh, the loft. I'm not worried about it. It's going to overlap right now, but when we look at um, at the camera view, you won't notice anything there. 
And if I come over here um, to this camera, you don't notice anything here. That's why I left it out there to make sure we don't see anything weird coming out of there. So it's good to go. Um, I'm going to next worry about, um, can I just get rid of these cameras for the moment? And then I need to put that door in here. But remember, we're going to do it with a doorway. Like we did with the same trick we did before. I'm going to put a doorway in here. And then uh, back again to um, open that up, the doorway, and I'm going to instead change it to a hinge door. Default, hit OK. And hopefully this gave us what we wanted to. Uh, go back to the camera, and again, there's that space. And you are already experts at uh, taking care of this. Do want to do one more thing before we do that. See how this door intersects there? So I'm going to go ahead and take this wall and slide it just a little bit further. It'll let me, doesn't want to let me do that. Okay, hold on. Let's try this wall. Go this way a little bit. See if it'll, I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to probably have to do this whole deal again. Okay, I'll do it again. It won't take very long. I'm going to go to um, doorway. Go to the camera view when I do the doorway. It's a little easier. Here's a doorway and then um, again, Select this opening. There, I've got my camera. I've got to, it's hard working in these closed spaces sometimes. You have to just kind of, there we go. I'm going to open it. Once I get the doorway, I'll open it up, change it to a hinge door, change it to default, hit OK. And there we go. And now when we put this door in here, it's going to, it will have a, um, It'll be able to fit a little bit better. So now I can go ahead and go get my poly solid. And I will just simply um, drag that poly solid. And then I have to click on it. And then, of course, select it. Have to hit next a couple times, open it up. I'll do the same thing 24 inches. And let's go to 75. I remember the old other one. You know what I could do? I could do the other one, but obviously, okay, that's fine. And then I'm just gonna take this guy and set him up. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust it with a uh, cross-section elevation camera anyway. I'll just kind of get this close and then come back, get my elevation camera, point this direction, and then I can really kind of clean it up a little bit. Drag this down right on top of that wall. I think the rest of it is good. All right, and then I need to do uh, my material selection. So I'm gonna open it up and materials, concrete. We don't want concrete. Instead, we want drywall. So type in drywall. Here we go, hit okay, hit okay. And now you should have a uh, nice little drywall finish and your wall looks good to go. So we have our little toilet room, our little closet room there and our next Matter of business is to put a shower in here. I'm not going to put a bathtub. Um, really, a lot of I mean, you could, but I don't think there's enough room to really do that right. So I'm going to do a uh, standalone shower and then like a little vanity uh, right here. So let's go to our plan view. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to um, use some straight or straight glass pony walls, and I'll just put that here in here and your vanity is going to end up in this little space in between so let me see how big that i made this uh, the shower three foot eight by four foot that's um what does that leave us right here four foot i think we've, we've got more than enough space there i'm gonna make the shower a little bit wider so let's go ahead and make that shower four foot this way and four foot this way it's a four by four. It's a pretty good size shower, actually. I don't really need to be four. Let's go, actually, let's put um, three foot six inches. There we go, that's better. And let's go ahead and look at the camera and see what we have. So you have a glass wall there. You really can't see it. Um, if I change this to um, my vector view, or I'm sorry, physically based, you kind of see it. There's where the glass is right there. Kind of hard to see unless you go to vector view. So I just kind of leave it in vector, or I'm sorry, not vector view, but physically based camera. Um, right now I'm going to put the shower door in though first. Let's go back here. And then I'm going to select, uh, go to my doors. 
and go to shower door. I'm going to put that shower door right in here. And then let's go ahead and look at that. And you can see there's my our glass shower door. And you see how the glass only comes to here. We don't need the glass to go all the way to the ceiling. I don't know why it does that. I, I guess you might not only be doing a shower with these walls. So that's why. But I just want to cut that glass down so it comes to the top of the door. So once again, we're going to be back on elevation camera. So I can go ahead and kill this elevation camera and come up with a new one. Um, cross section elevation. And there, look at that crazy glass door. Let's, um, or wall, I can bring this down to the top of the shower door. I don't think I did that. Let me hit control Z. I don't think I um, did that right. Now let's go ahead and hit next. There we go. Now I have it. I guess I wasn't on it. I thought it was, but it wasn't. So drag this down to the top of the shower. And then we look in here and there you go. You can see it work on that one. Now I need to make another elevation camera going in this direction. And there we go. I hit next. There we go. I'm on the glass shower door. I'll just bring this down lower. And then I should be able to see where the top of the glass is. I don't think I brought it low enough, maybe. There we go. So there's where the top of that is. Uh, I like to bring it extra low so you can kind of see it and bring it back up to where it meets up with that. Let's go ahead and look in there. And there is our shower. Um, it doesn't have all the things it's going to need yet because it's going to need materials. Right now we have wood floor under there. We're going to need some more stuff. So um, might as well just go ahead and continue building this shower out. So what I can do is I can uh, hit next. Let's see if we can uh, do that. I can build this room. Uh, I will do the flooring in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, let's go ahead and open object and let's see if I can call this a shower without it being messed up. I don't know if I can. If I call it a space, it might it might mess it up. Let's just go back. Uh, I didn't want to do bedroom. I wanted to do bathroom. Um, we're going to change the flooring anyway, so it's not that important. So, um, let me move this over. It doesn't really matter right now. Oh, this is bedroom and I don't want to show room label, but let's hit okay and see what that does to it. If that messes up, uh, using one of these cameras out here, it did see how it made that wall up there. But that's, that's one of the things I was concerned about. So I'm gonna hit undo and, um, go out here to make sure that I got, yeah, I got rid of that. So in here, I think I'm going to do like a material region or something and see if I can get the shower fixed that way. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get into my camera view and let's see if I can, let's see if I can, that's one of the problems when you're working with half walls and stuff like that. It doesn't want to do the materials right. So we might have to do like wall material region and stuff like that. I can do that. Um, Let's go ahead and go to our wall tools and I'll work on that right now. So let me go to wall material region. I know that's one thing I can do right now. Uh, I'm grabbing the wrong thing. I was on the glass right there. So I want to make sure you get the right angle when you're doing this and get through the glass and then do your wall material region. I think I'm on that wall material region. And then I will just, uh, with my mouse, I don't want my mouse is disappearing on me there I do it back there I kind of did it above the above the shower so that now I, when I grab it I won't be you know interfering with the glass I'll do the same thing over here and then once I do that I can I can select that wall material region and I can kind of drag it down all the way down and then over to the wall and then over to this wall go out to that that point that's pretty good and then on this one, I'll do the same. I will um, let's rotate it around a little bit. And then that way I can um, adjust it to meet the other parts of it. I really like the subway tile in these particular areas. It looks nice. Move that over. And then I'm going to come over out to this uh, exterior half wall. And I'm going to have to pan down a little bit. Um, I'm just going to drag that all the way down. And uh, let's just back off a little bit and take a look at our what we have pretty close to what I need it to be I, I do want this tile to come uh, this is where when you have to reselect it you kind of have to tilt it up a little bit and make sure you don't get on the uh, the glass wall it's easy to get that I'm just gonna drag it out a little bit more then I can get back on this and uh, that's a little too much I'm gonna go back 
Let's go back maybe one tick there. That ought to do it. And now we have the walls of our shower area done and um, other things we can do. We can put the shower head in right now. Why don't we do that? Shower head, I'm gonna go shower head and see what our options are. This one I really like, that retro head. I've always liked that one. I think it looks nice. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the shower. It automatically defaults to a nice height, which looks pretty good. And um, I'm gonna do a wall niche over here uh, to put all our stuff in. So let's go ahead and um, I need to elevate this up, move it around so I can get in there. That's pretty good. Just have to get around this glass, it gets in the way. So remember the wall niche is in the window tools. I don't know why it doesn't make any sense to me, but it is what it is. So I made a wall niche in here and um, of course I need to um, adjust the, the materials. I think it's too high. I think this wall niche is too high also. So let's kind of bring it down a little bit. So I will select it, bring it down. Something like that looks pretty good. Um, make sure I like it. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm going to, um, I'm sure there's a standard height you do these things in. I just don't know what it is. So if that's important to you, look it up. I'm gonna eye drop this and finish the rest of the tile out in this wall niche. So maybe we'll put our shampoo and soap and that sort of thing. We can put a little shelf in there with a poly solid, but I'm gonna move on from this part of the project right now and uh, just try to, um, finish up the rest of the bathroom. We'll get back, we still have to deal with the flooring here. So we'll deal with the flooring on the shower room, we'll deal with the rest of the flooring. Do it all in one spot. Uh, right here, we need to put a cabinet. So I'm going to go to my, my cabinet tools. Uh, how about a base cabinet? And I'm just going to select that base cabinet and drag it out and fill up the space. It'll be a custom 42 inch uh, cabinet right there. And uh, on top of there, I'm gonna put a mirror so rather than just drag some mirror with a um with a frame on it i'm going to do something a little different i'm going to use my wall material region and i've done this before it ends up being a pretty cool trick so i'm going to move this over very close to the wall come down i'm going to do a backsplash there so I, i'll adjust that later and i'm just going to kind of come up to the top of where the shower is and then what i want to do with it is i'm going to double click on that wall material region and click on material hit edit on material layers and then right here it says pattern and i just want this to be a mirror so type in mirror and there will be a mirror uh, material do that um, i think that's all i gotta do hit okay and check that out now we have a mirror to be kind of like something you might use construction adhesive to put on the wall it doesn't take up much space it's kind of easy to easy to do um, i'm going to put um, vanity lights i think that's one of the defaults in here you can find i found it before vanity vanity light there it is vanity light so i'll put them uh right above here i like to do two of them because they're super tiny um Control C, Control V. There's two of them. Uh, I'll come back over here and kind of try to even out their spacing because I did they're very random how I put it in there. Let's move this over a little bit. Move this one over a little bit. That's pretty good. Let's check it out. So right now, um, this bathroom is almost done and I'm looking at the length of this video and I think that's about as far as I want to go on this project. Um, house build last we left off we were working in this bathroom our video is getting a little long so let's go ahead and finish up this bathroom in this video and see what else we can get done first matter of business let's go ahead and deal with this shower now you notice what i did i immediately flipped the camera up on end the reason i did that is because to do the floor here because we're using half walls the trick we're going to use is to use a wall material region to fill this area in so i like to make a little region like that and then take our um, selection tool and just kind of drag it out to where it needs to be on the base of this shower. Whoops, let go, there we go. Fill in that whole area. And then what I'd like to do is go ahead and open object and um, 
go to edit and then where it says tiles or whatever it says right here go pattern and we want um, I'm gonna type in subway and let's just choose some white subway tiles hit okay hit okay hit okay and that when I click off of it should give us some good subway tile on the on the bottom and now that we have a floor in our shower our next part of our business is to make a little drain there so let's go ahead and do that easy just type in just type in drain in your library browser and if you scroll down a little bit there's a round drain I like to use that one you can use a square one if you if you choose doesn't really matter also not important where the front and back of this is because it's round so our shower is looking good. One thing we need to do in the shower though is we're going to need to put some kind of a threshold here. So I'll do that in the floor plan view. And as you probably guessed already, anytime we want to make something that's a little bit unique, we are going to um, use a poly solid. So let me get this camera out of the way. And I'm going to go to my poly solids. And click poly solid. I'll just kind of make it right out here. And then I will double click on it. And the thickness should be about uh, three inches thick, I think. The floor to top will be also three inches. Hit OK. Let's go ahead and look at our camera and see what it did. That looks about right. So I want to move it in. I'll do that in the floor plan view. I want to move it in over here. What will happen is it'll probably stop right there. So you have to hold the control button down on your keyboard to just kind of overcome those uh, invisible barriers. And let's go ahead and see what we have. So that threshold looks pretty good. Uh, one thing I want to do is uh, at this point, I'm going to change that material. This poly solid, of course, comes in as concrete. So we'll make it um, match uh, the the uh, countertop and whatever this edge is we're going to do right here. And of course, that will be all the same. So I'm just going to type in granite. I'm sorry. Let me do that again. Let me go ahead and uh, get on my material. Oh, I'll just click on it rather. Let's go to materials on the poly solid. Sorry to cut you guys are running around there. And I'm going to type in granite. See what we have as far as granite goes. And I think there's one that will look pretty nice. Let's see here. Frost. Is that the one? No, there's one a little bit lighter one in here somewhere. White spring granite. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to hit OK. Hit OK. And that should give us a... Um, a granite threshold right there so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the eyedropper and click on that material make sure you don't grab that glass by accident I'm just gonna click right on top of this and that'll get our ledge in that granite and then I'm gonna go ahead and also uh, take care of that countertop right there while I'm um, here why don't I double click, click on this cabinet and make sure I get a uh, backsplash and make sure I click on the sides too. hit okay yeah I forgot to do that before and uh, I want that backsplash to match the countertop. So let's just go ahead and do that. And that looks pretty good. So now, next thing to do while we're while we're at it is uh, we can take care of the flooring. We can also take care of the, uh, the walls in here. I want to do kind of a, a cool um, kind of texture on the wall. And what I'm going to do is go chip and join the gains on you and use some shiplap. So I'm just going to type in ship lap in my material and I uh, have a, a satin ship lap. I'm going to hit OK and I'm just going to paint and let's see what it does from this poly solid. See how it makes it match perfectly. That is awesome. And um, now uh, before I get too far, I also want to get on these walls too, by the way, I want um, to have a little bit of color on here. So let's go ahead and choose the color. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a new color. We've never done that before. Um, I've never done that before in these videos. So I am just gonna go through the process with you and then you can use whatever color you want. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to um, my uh, user catalogs and yours will look something like this. And we're just gonna do a user catalog. I'm gonna do a right click and hit new uh, material. And that'll pop up. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, click on the color, and this this will come up. So I want I'm going to make like a light blue color. So I'm going to go somewhere in the blues here. I'm just going to go very subtle, just kind of bring it down a little bit. Hit OK, something like that. Now I didn't do it, you know, very much at all. I just want a very subtle light. 
So I'm gonna hit, uh, I have to uh, give it a name. And you can see over here in the trash, I already done this process before. I just wanted to make sure I'm doing it right. I'm just gonna put it in a light blue color, hit okay. Get to library, hit okay, there we go. So now I have this color in here. So um, what I can do is, let's just say, let's just say you're not on it at the time. You can just type in here, light blue is what I wanted and then uh, you'll find it, put light blue color, click on it. And then I can just click on here and now I've painted my siding this light blue color. The reason I did it now is because once I get that, I can um, kind of put that material everywhere. I can just kind of uh, take the ship lap that's already blue and then I can take that and, sorry, I can eye drop that and just kind of paint our walls. And then if it's not, you know, I'm not having to go through the process twice. This is blue. I'll have to eye drop that. And as long as I can get to where I can eye drop it, we're good. The same thing over here. I'm just going to do this whole bathroom like this in this light blue. Uh, let's turn it around. Eye drop. There we go. And. I will um, you know, rotate around some more and let's go ahead and uh, on this one, we got to put a door in. So um, before I do the material, let's go ahead and through that, go through that process. And if you guys remember when we did this because we're doing a door and a half wall, we're going to have to make a doorway and then convert it to a door afterwards because that will uh, kind of give us the desired effect. Otherwise it makes a, um, it makes a, kind of makes a mold and go to the roof. So we don't want that. So I'm gonna go doorway and I'm just gonna click in the wall here. And then I can double click on that and change it from that to, let's go use default and let's call it the hinge door, hit okay. And then I'm going to grab my poly solid like I've done in these other sections. Let's kind of make it come across there. I'm gonna double click it. Let's make it, uh, I'll start with 24 inches and let's go about 60 inches from the bottom. Hit okay. And now we're gonna to have to, um, a couple things for one, I'm going to control click to get it in place here. That's pretty good. And I'm gonna zoom in and just kind of line these things up as best we can. That looks pretty good. Uh, next, we're going to need to go up to the top here, grab a cross-section elevation camera, point at it, and then right here, there's our um, there's our poly solid. I'm gonna have to hit the next button to, to really grab it. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Well, here's a trick. If it doesn't if it doesn't work the first time, it kind of get it in this view. There it goes. And I'm just going to kind of drag it close to where it needs to be. And then when I go back into elevation, it'll probably let me get it this time. It did. And I'm just going to use um, my mouse to move it up. And then I'm going to custom size it right up to the top of that door. And then it should look pretty good now. Now we can go ahead and get our eyedropper and get that ship up in there. And there we go. So we've uh, covered all that area. Um, I don't like these white doors. Let's make the door, let's make the doors a different color too. So let's just um, I'm gonna hit the delete key up here, and let's just go to our core catalogs and go to colors. I'm, just, I'm not gonna do anything crazy right here, but I do want to um, make a uh, a darker darker color. So let's see what we have here. Let's see what black would look like. Uh, black looks terrible. I really was thinking about doing something darker. Um, hey, maybe I'll make my own color. We know how to do that now. Hold on a second. I'm going to go over here uh, to my user catalog, right click, and then hit new material. And then I'm just going to pick a color. So I'll go to material color, and I want something just dark. I just don't want it like black, black. I just want it kind of like a little bit gray in it. You can look at these numbers that I'm coming up with. Let's see what this looks like. That might be pretty good. Uh, I think that's about what I want. See, it's black and gray, kind of. So you can, you know, if you have to go back and look at the numbers I got for that, or you can put whatever color you want, really. Um, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a name and put, um, I don't know what to call this, um, coffee. Coffee color, something like that. That's it. Uh, add to library. Okay. And then um, now I can. Uh, on the, I'm on the coffee color. I can just kind of click on the door 
and it gives it that you know darker color let's do the same thing here and i kind of like it and we'll put it on that other door as well the door on the other side um well i went through the wall that's the door i was talking about so let's uh coffee color there we go so now all our doors are um, kind of colored. Uh, I still want to do the floors. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. So I can just kind of uh, go to my my floor plan view. Let me get rid of all these cameras. I got too much going on here. My floor plan view and then I'll just kind of um, open this up. I have the bathroom open. I'm going to go to materials and uh, oh. Somehow I, I somehow I selected you know what I selected the, uh, the loft so that's my mistake there we go let's try that one now I'm on the in the in the um, bathroom so let's go to materials and floor finish and let's just find a floor that'll be better now keep in mind you wouldn't use hardwood floors in a bathroom but today with some composites uh, type materials that have a wood look to them that are you know, SPC WPC that are um, composites that are waterproof so uh, when I put a wood floor in here keep that in mind that we're just going to kind of try to pick something that um, that is going to give that look but at the same time we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll put real wood I'm going to hit uh, the oak plank on the bottom here with that gray let's hit okay and let's go ahead and see what that, what that looks like yeah that looks pretty good that's kind of the color scheme I was going for in here so that looks good i also noticed that my wall is too low i don't know how i did that uh that, that's an easy fix let's go get ahead get a cross-section elevation camera point this direction and let's fix that wall i think it's this one right here yeah well it's that one but it's also if i can get it i think that's it yeah bring it up a little bit there we go. Now we go back in here. There, it's all fixed. Looks like I did the same thing to that wall, but I'm gonna I'm moving on. I don't want to waste too much time on that. If yours is like that, fix it. So, um, looking in this room uh, right here, what we can do is uh, same thing. I can uh, come over here, go to next. Let's get that in that one room. Let's open it up. And select that material. I can't really eye drop because there's a door between it. So let's go ahead to the floor, select material, and I'll scroll down to the oak. And there's that one we want. Hit OK, hit OK, and that floor looks, should be good. Also, now moving out here, uh, let's go ahead and get a new camera and let's look in this hallway and let's start putting some shiplap on the walls because I kind of want that to be the theme of this house so let's go ahead and eye drop and I grab that right there start putting some cool wall colors in there um, we can paint this door the color we want I'm gonna go ahead and uh, oh, let's go just go with the coffee color let's see if we can paint that there we go that door is painted now um, probably want to paint this other door right here this one so I can just uh, eye drop right here Click on the door. There we go. And um, time to turn around. Let's walk through this house. And we want to fix these floors as well. Let's see if I'll pick up the whole room. It pick up the whole room. That's good. Materials. Let's go to our floor. Select material. And I'm going to go down to the oak and select this gray oak. And hit OK. Hit OK. There we go. And we're looking good. Um, the walls here are definitely in need of some help they're very boring looking so let's go ahead and fix these walls too and there we go i think i'm gonna do a backsplash over there so i won't put that ship up over there and i'm going to i drop there we go i'll go up there as well kind of turn around we are looking pretty good everybody so um oh up here we want to definitely do the walls up here so I drop. I almost got it. Hit that side wall. Yeah, there we go. So that's all. Um, all shiplap. I should do a back flash here. So um, let's go ahead in this area, 
and I'm going to do a wall material region. So go to wall material region. And I can just grab that. And then um, what I'd like to do is if uh, I could go ahead and select that and drag it to where I need it to be. I want it the whole length of this cabinet. Here we go and I'll drag it up. Bottom of that cabinet, of course. You know, if we want to really get accurate, we're going to get a cross-sectional elevation camera. I just like to get it kind of, kind of close. Go up a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to um, go ahead and do an elevation camera. So go right here, grab it up on the top, point in that direction, and there's our backsplash. Let's see if it'll let me get it. It did. So now I'm going to go up to the bottom of the cabinets. Go up a little bit. That ought to work. It's okay if it's a little bit behind it. And then I'm not worried about this because I'm probably going to put a backsplash over it, but that'll work. And uh, oh, by the way, my default was was subway tile, which is what I wanted. So that's kind of cool. Worked out for us. Um, I need to do these countertops. And again, this is a tiny house. We're going to keep this simple. So we're going to uh, use that same. Um, let me just type in granite. I'm going to use that same material that we use in the bathroom and let's just assume that we bought a big old slab of granite and we're going to use it in multiple places in the house so white spring granite let's go ahead and use that here and here and here and here and then of course i have to do my um, backsplashes let's see if i can do them all at once i don't know if it'll let me let's try it I'm going to hit open. I hold shift, by the way, that's like more than one. Yeah, it'll let me. So I'm going to hit backsplash and hit OK. And there we go. I think it made a backsplash. Let's see. I have to hit the camera. I don't see a back. Probably because this wall material region's in the way. Is that what it did? Yeah, that's what it did. So um, I'm going to um, eye drop the granite and put the backsplash as the granite here. And then I'll adjust my wall material region to just come right up to that granite, something like that. Um, and I think on here I want to do uh, the side. So I want to hit the side on this particular cabinet. That kind of finishes that up, and we're looking pretty good. So that is uh, the inside. Is looking the way we want. Oh, I forgot this wall over here with the shiplap, and probably back here. There we go. I stuck it all behind there, so you can't see it. Um, these walls are too low. I can see that. Well, that's that's something you guys can fix later. It's pretty pretty basic. I think you could figure it out, but um, you know, make an elevation camera and drag that up. So I'm gonna move on to the next uh, step I need to do. Okay, another thing that's bugging me is material on this um, dishwasher and refrigerator because we don't want a white refrigerator. So let's go ahead to materials here and let's get rid of the white. Hit select material, and we're going to want to go with. Um, I'm going to type in stainless. See if I can find some stainless steel. There it is. Hit OK. Hit OK. And now we have a stainless steel fridge. I think uh, I'm going to do that over here on this dishwasher as well. Get my materials. Oh, it's all. Well, I've got a whole bunch of point I've got to do. Let me see if I can just eye drop it. And, uh, let's see. It did. Okay, so we got that uh, stainless. We'll do the top of stainless also. Okay, there we go. So now we're looking um, pretty good. One thing that I've been putting off that I need to address now is how do we get up to this loft? So I need to make a, I need to make a way to get up there. Um, so that's what we're gonna do now. I also, um, let me get see this. I'm gonna I drop that white right there and get it on this on this loft because that looked kind of dumb and it's just a sheet rock color so what i'm going to do is and there's a couple of ways to do this but the way i found the easiest way to do it is to just kind of do it with a poly solid and i'll show you how we're going to do this we're going to go to a floor plan view and i'm going to go to my poly solid get polyline solid and i'm going to just kind of put it right in there oh i don't want i'm sorry my fault i meant I'm going to do that. Let me go to my poly solids and choose box because I'm going to have to rotate it and it's much easier to do it that way. So let's double click on this and I'm just going to make this uh, much smaller. Let's go like two by two. Now on the height, let's put nine foot. 
that's pretty good and um, okay and what I want to do here let's, sit, let's go ahead and look at that let me see the camera that's what we did right there is that tall enough I, don't think, so. I think we want to come a little bit taller so let's double click on that again instead of 108 let's make it like 112 let's see what that looks like there we go I just want to extend a little bit above this right here so um, you kind of see it when in the top and all that so what I want to do is I want to rotate this so I'm gonna go ahead and do that okay so we have this um, poly solid and what we're gonna do is I am going to go to my plan view and I'm going to create a, a cross-section elevation camera it's kind of pointing in this direction and then there is our poly solids so we're gonna our poly box is what it is poly solid box I'm going to rotate, I want to rotate this using holding my button down and rotate. But if I do it and I have this little angle snap on there, it, it just jumps to an angle that's a little bit more than I want. So I'm just going to click that angle snap thing. So it's, see it's unselected. And then if I rotate again, now I can go to, you know, a little bit more of a subtle angle, something like that. I think that's a pretty good angle right now. You can see it's going through the edge there. I think I can yeah, move it over a little bit. That's pretty good. I can see it's not touching perfectly but we probably you know probably the snap is uh part of that problem as well it's probably like snapping it weird there we go if you, if you can't get right on something some of them uncheck uh the, these things are good to have on most of the time but if you can't get right on something that's a good thing to do so we have this one and what i'm going to do first is i'm going to go to my materials and let's what I want to do, I don't want it to be concrete. Let's do this now. Otherwise, we'll have to just kind of do all the materials later. So I'm going to type in uh, metal. I think it's metal. And then I think I could go like black metal rough. I'm going to make it the same finish as that railing up there, which I think would look nice. If I come over here to my camera, there it goes. Yeah, it'll match very well. So let's, let's take... Um, I go to my plan view and I'll take that and I hit control C, control V and I'll get a second one. And then what I'm going to do is I am just going to kind of move it over and we're going to get them a certain, you know, distance apart. And uh, I'm going to try to line them up a little bit. That looks pretty good. Let me look at it real quick and uh, not from that angle, but from this angle, make sure that, uh, Get them line up as best you can. I can take these off and just kind of adjust these a little bit. Make sure you get on the four-way arrow when you're doing that. I'm just gonna try to line this up best I can. There we go. Let's go to the full camera and um, here we go. Elevation camera, you really can't see it. I'm just gonna get out of there. And where is our camera? Let's make our camera uh, move around. Let's put a little different angle, and that's what we have so far. And basically what I want to do now is since I have it at an angle, I'm just going to use always, always, always use the same box. Don't try to make a new box because then it'll already be at the angle, and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to uh, go to floor plan view, and I'm hit, while it's selected, I'm hit control C, control V, and I have it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, and actually let's try to do it in the camera view. I'm going to take this and I'm going to let's see if I can, let's see if I can just open it up and see if do it that way. Okay, so basically where it says two two one twelve on the height, I'm going to go to I think it's going to be like this two. Now it's all twos. And my width I want to go. I don't know how far apart that is. Let's try thirty six. See what that looks like. Uh, went the wrong way with it, so I'm going to hit open. So let's make this 36 and let's make this 2. I think that should work. Hit OK. There we go. See how it's now going in the direction we want it to? That's a good thing. So um, if I go to my cross section elevation, you can see that here it is. I'm going to move it up, move it over, and somewhere around there. I'm just kind of eyeballing. I'm going to hit Control C, Control V, and I'll paste another one. And of course, I'll get another cross-section elevation camera. Um, let me get that going now. And point in this direction, because you are, can already see that that one was off. So I think I have two of them now. One of them ended up way over here. 
it happens. So let's just kind of go in there and uh, I'm going to delete this one too. All right. So what I should have done is done this elevation camera first because I'm going to adjust the width of this till it fits right there. There we go. So now when we look at our full camera, it should look nice. It should look like it's all lined up and everything. I think it does. I can go in my other um, cameras and see if it sticks out or something. It doesn't look like it does. So, okay. So I'm going to take this. I think it sticks out over here for some reason. Yeah, we're just going to over. It doesn't matter if it sticks through because it'll just be in the middle of it. That's where it'll look. I can hit control C, control V. There's another one. It usually pops up like right on top of the, the, the um, one you just made. So what I'll do is I'm just going to kind of um, line them up and then I'll do my adjustments. And of course, I'm going to have to go into my cross section elevation camera at some point. And because they won't be, it looks, it'll look good in this view, but it won't look good in the other views. Let me try one more. There we go. Something like that. That looks pretty good. Um, let's see our cross section elevation. See how they're all wacky, like sticking over here. So I'll just have to take these and move it straight over there. And then this one. I'm just going to take these and just kind of put them in the right spot. Yeah, there's another one right there. It's a little, it's close, but it's still off a little bit. Get it in the right spot. Make sure I don't have anything wonky sticking out somewhere. And let's go ahead and look at our camera and check it out. We have a, we have a ladder. We have a way to climb up to our loft right now. That's kind of what we were lacking. Um, inside of this thing is looking pretty nice. We still have to do some stuff to, to fix it up. And like I already told you, this wall right here, you know, we could we can do that real quick. If you're worried about how to do that, I, I'm just going to go to my ele elevation camera three. This one right here I already have. See if I can get that wall. I don't know if it'll let me. Those are cabinets. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't want you to. Um, I can try to do it in the full camera. Sometimes, if you get it just right, you can you can get in there and grab that wall. Is that it? I don't know. I don't think I got it. If I try to grab it, yeah, like that. I got that one. I can I can get that one and move it up a little bit. But I don't think that one's the problem. It's the other ones, but that's why I didn't really want to mess with this. Uh, but now, now I've seen to have already started it. So let's see if we can get it. Here we go. If you can get it in the right spot and hit next, it'll let you grab it. And who knows, your walls might be right already. It might just be my walls uh, that are acting this way. Sometimes that happens. Um, let's see. Ah, I got it. Okay. Contract it up a little bit. I don't really care if it overlaps into the, into the loft. I just don't want to see that pattern. So that's pretty good. The inside of this loft is, uh, I'm sorry, inside of this, this tiny home is looking pretty good. Now, um, I think I'm going to shut this one down for now. And I'm, I'm going to do something on the outside of the house. If I uh, do a perspective full overview outside, I still need to do some work out here. I think I want to do a deck or something like that, but generally the inside of this thing is done. I hope you enjoyed that part. If you don't care about the outside, just move on with your lives. But uh, otherwise we want to see the, how we finish this, maybe do some landscaping and all come on back more. Thanks for watching this of this uh, project today uh, we are going to work on the outside of the house we've been doing most of our work on the inside got pretty much most of that complete and now we will talk about what to do next so this this video right here will be a uh, probably posted as a standalone video uh, for the deck building itself for someone who just wants to learn how to do that and then of course uh, I will you know include this as part of the playlist for the uh, tiny house building so the first thing we have to do out here is we need to build some sort of foundation but you know, keep in mind we're not going to do anything like a traditional foundation on this house certainly you could build a tiny house on a traditional foundation but uh i'm going to assume that this is going to be one of those tiny houses that were probably mobile that you can put on a trailer or something like that move it around and so normally they would be on a trailer some kind of a metal trailer built um, underneath and then that trailer might be blocked uh, put up on blocks which would be probably six by six or eight by eight 
uh, post. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically um, replicate what that would look like as best we can. And then we're going to build a deck from there. So let's go ahead and go to our foundation. And normally what we're going to do is we're going to use this um, this build new floor tab. But before uh, what we're going to do first uh, before we uh, do use that is we're going to have to actually build a foundation. I'm going to go to build and then go floor and then build foundation. And what we want to do is it's probably defaults to walls with footings. We're going to go grade beams with piers. Um, these slab th thicknesses. I think I've already been playing these settings. That's why they are. But, you know, check them out. I think the lowest for the pier depth you can put is 24, at least in this setting. And then you have to go in and kind of manually move them. Um, so these are the settings. We have a one inch slab. Stem walls are eight inches. That'll be kind of the part that um, fills in for the metal trailer. And then we have our piers themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Hit OK. And then this is what we get with that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take these footings, we're going to, we're going to shrink them down a little bit because I want to say they're about 24 inches. Now we'll put like a four foot height on this. I don't want this thing wet up in the air like that, so I'm going to lower it down a little bit. Um, but it won't just let me, you know, do it. Um, will just let me do it uh, in the regular settings that I can figure out. So I'm just going to have to manually go through and fix all this stuff. So um, what I'm going to do is let me get rid of some of these elevation cameras and I'll kind of make some new ones because I want to do this uh, same time you guys are watching it. So let's go to our cross-section elevation camera, which of course is right up here. Let's get a point at it at this, and then let's uh, take care of a couple of things. For one, we don't want these uh, beams sticking off the edge of that um, foundation, um, or the trailer rather, because we're gonna put some lattice up to here, so we'll have to adjust that. So what I'm gonna do is number one, I'm just gonna drag the height of this thing back up to eight inches. We go and then that's the front one and i'll have to do the same thing for the back one and then i can also drag it in to eight inches and then let me see if i get the back one too drag it into eight inches and i'm just going to do every one i could do like that in in each um, cross-section elevation view and then we will um go from there so let's see i'm gonna drag that one into eight inches like the next one in eight inches kind of a tedious process i think i might have messed this one up yeah that's nine inches Make that eight instead i'm just going to go through here um going up to eight we're making them all eight inches and and i think from my calculation that's going to be about what we want it to be for um for the deck height to be what you would normally see if you made a deck i think i made that one nine by accident okay and we're just gonna work our way over, um, see if it'll let me do this one, it will. Sometimes you have to hit these uh, cross-section elevations at different angles to, um, to make it work. And see, it won't let me do that one. I think I've got almost, no, it won't let me do that one either. So let's come up here back to our plan view and let's make ourselves another cross-section elevation. This time we'll go this direction. And I'll just kind of try to try to grab these and uh, just just like I did the other ones. Eight inches, eight inches, and then we'll bring them in. Again, this process can get kind of tedious, but sometimes that's what it takes to get it done. I'm going to drag these in from the edge and come over here and see if this will let me did and I'm going to come up eight inches and I'm going to come over here that one won't let me so let me come back over here and see if yeah see now sometimes if you do one you can come back to the other elevation camera and it will let you move it so that's what that did there we go. And we're in from the edge now. Um, probably get this one too. I don't need to click it just at the right spot. Of course, it's not gonna let me. So let's see if we can do it from this one. There we go. Come up and then come in. Let's see, I think we might have them all. Let's see if I can go check my other elevation cameras. I think we're pretty good. Okay. So let's go to our full overview and see what we have now. So now we have these little um, 
eight inch uh, post under here. We're going to make this uh, double click that. If I go to materials, no, oh, I'm, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do material sprayer and I'm just going to uh, check in metal. If you remember, we used this black uh, rough metal, something like that on the inside when we did our uh, railings and stuff. We can use the same, the same thing because I kind of like the way that looks. And that will um, make sure I get all of it. I'm going to go around the outside and you know, just eye drop that material and make sure that this whole foundation is the same. And again, we're just replicating uh, what, what a metal uh, trailer would be. And as far as these go, um, I think we want them to be some kind of a wood. But I, I can get that later because when we build a deck, it's going to give me a beam. It's the perfect... Um, kind of four by four um, all weather uh, wood that we can put under there. So now that I did that, let's go ahead and build our deck. So I'm gonna go back to my floor plan view and I'm gonna go to my wall tools and I want to select the uh, room divider. It used to be a used to be a tool called invisible wall and chief architect, now they call it room divider. And I'm just going to draw out and over I'm going to line it up with the edge here. And let me see what my dimensions are. It's eight and a half. I think I want to make it about, about a 10 foot deck. It's a good exterior space is good on a tiny house. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. So this is what it made. Um, well, we got to fix some stuff on that. So let's go ahead and double click in this area. And it's just unspecified. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it a deck. That's going to change some stuff. I'm going to hit OK. Let's take a look outside. And this is what it gave us. This is exactly what we wanted. So now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this deck. And I'm going to go into my structure. Let's see. Maybe it's deck supports. Our deck supports, we want not round ones. We want square ones. And I think we want to make them 8 inches and by 8. Let's see. Let's see how that goes for us. There we go. So now um, our deck supports are pretty much lined up with those. Let's make sure that they are by looking at an elevation camera. They're not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, let me see what it should be. It should be about a foot, I think. So let me go back into um, my deck, open it up, go to my uh, deck support. And I think if I make these a height of 12, let's see if that did it. So what I like to do is go to my cross-section elevation. Nah, it's not going to do it. Let me just go ahead and drag this down. Let's quit beating around the bush with this thing. So that is a foot. They're all supposed to be about a foot. Actually, it looks like more than a foot, maybe one foot, uh, 13 inches. So I'm just going to drag this all to 13 inches or one foot, one inch. There we go. And here's one to eight. We'll go for one foot, one inch. And then finally this. One. Okay. Let's make sure this one took. Okay, now we'll look at our flow review, and there we go. Now we have something that looks about right. Now this is what I meant by um, the material. So see this beam right here? We're gonna use that as a material for all of our, what will be four by fours. And I'm just gonna click every one I can in the, in, in the view of the screen. Careful not to hit the wrong thing. I can even zoom in and go underneath there. If you're careful with your mouse, you can do this fairly quickly. And then these two. And then, of course, I'm panning by pushing down my middle scroll wheel on the mouse. And I think I got everything. So let's go ahead and take a look. And there we go. So we have our deck done. Uh, this is no good. I don't want this um, siding to be on the side of my deck. So let's just do something like um, let's. Let's actually put this material on this. And then what I'll do is I'll actually do, get a color. So I'll type in color. If I remember the, the color from um, 
that house. I'm gonna say it's, it's like a bone color. Yeah, like that. And then I'll get that color and I'll put that on the edge of this wood. And it'll, it'll be simulation of uh, painted wood. And then um, I'm just gonna kind of work around over here and I don't know if it'll get all of it. Here, it did get all of it. Okay, so there we go. So now we have um, we have our deck in place and next matter of business is to finish this off a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put some uh, lattice on here. Uh, so let's look up the lattice. And this is the, let me see which ones I like. I think there's like a folder with lattice in there or something like that. Let's see. This is the one I like. This, uh, this, that's the one right there. It says Andante Lattice. I think it's in there, right? So that's what I want. And I want to put this um, in the, you have to do it in a floor plan view if you want it to come out right. So I'm just going to click and just do one of them. And I'm going to get, I'm going to go along the front of this house to start with. And then I'm going to do some adjusting on it. So I'm going to move it down. Of course, you have to hold your control button to move it down. And I want to make it so this uh, level with the ground level, something like that. And then I'm just going to... Um, Get, let me see the height and then I'll, then I'll readjust it. So the height should be 21 inches, right? So I hit Control Z to undo that. And I'm just gonna double click on it and then I'm gonna type in remain as retain aspect ratio, otherwise it'll look all squished up. And uh, then I'll get that height, which is 21 inches. So it looks something like that. It gives like a little, a little square area of, of lattice and then, um, what I could do is I could take that lattice and get it in the right spot. Make sure that that looks right. Okay, it's over there on the end. And then what I can do is I could just make a bunch of lattice uh, boards along here and um, we'll make them right. So the, the length of it right now is it's just 21 inches because it's square, I guess. So what we want to do is we want to have enough of these things get back on it we can go all the way along here I can actually probably copy it we copy and paste that would be better so I'll take that control C control V and then I will uh, move this one so it's lined up with the other one there we go paste again probably will get fairly quick at, at this after a couple do we need a couple times You can hold the control button if you don't want to fuss with lighting up things. Control V again. And I have a feeling when I go to um, look at this, it's going to be up in the air. So I'm like, oh, it actually, actually did it the right way. That's a good thing. So let's go keep on moving. Control V. Of course, I hit control if you have any issues with it um, lining up. You just hit control and it'll go, it won't uh, get stuck on areas that uh, you know might interfere with it pasting in the right place that you want it to be. Control V again, paste, and then I'll just keep on putting these in there and I'm just kind of working my way towards the edge. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish up this. I'm gonna pause the video and then I'll reconvene once I get this done. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a little trick. So I got to the to the um, whole front of it was done. Of course, the reason I did these panels because I wanted to be proportionate like this. So when I look at it though, uh, when I got to the end, there was a little space left over. So what's the easiest thing to do is take one of these and squish it in, but that looks terrible. So we don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete this one. And then I'm going to count the panels. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I have 14 panels. And I look at my floor plan and I can see that I have 26 feet right there. So I'm going to get out my calculator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit 26 feet times 12, which would be, that's how many inches. It's 312 inches. And I'm going to divide that by 14 because we have 14 panels. 
and it says 22.28. So what I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna go back in here, and now I'm gonna take these panels, I'm gonna take them one at a time, and I'm going to, whoops, I'm on the wrong thing. I'm going to uh, double click it, and I'm gonna make it, and make sure that was, yeah, 22.28, 22.28. And I'm gonna highlight this, by the way, or 22 and a quarter, it'll, it'll just uh, automatically change that and hit okay. You see it moved it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is line this up on the end, and then I'm just gonna slowly take, take these one by one, best probably to be down low and just hit uh, 22 and a quarter, hit okay. Take this, move it down until it lines up, make sure it's touching. There we go. And I'm just gonna do all this. I'm gonna pause this video again and I'm gonna get all this done. Just to show the process in the lattice, what I'm doing is I'm in the cross-section elevation view and I'm just gonna double click on this. I'm gonna control V because I have that number posted in there. I'm gonna hit okay. Then I'm just gonna use the arrow on my keyboard and move this over until it lines up. So same process again, highlight, control V, okay. Move it over with my arrow until it lines up. So I'm gonna pause again until I get this. So this one panel on the end when you get to it, of course, because we went 22.25 instead of 22.28. So that accumulated over 14, made me have to change this one panel here to 23, but it's not very noticeable. Um, so we're just gonna go and let that, let that go. So right now, um, this is what the front of our deck looks like. And I'm gonna do a similar process over here. So I'm gonna start putting this deck panels in or these lattice panels, I should say rather. So I'm just gonna click, um, actually I'm gonna take one of those that I already have here. Let me zoom in if I see if I grab it. And I'm gonna control C, control V, and then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this around so it's facing the right direction. Only this time, uh, we're gonna be doing it um, on this side. So I'm gonna figure out how many I need to put in and to fill it out, and then I'm going to do my multiplication. So let me go ahead and take this, I'm gonna copy these, fill this area in, then I'll be recording. Okay, so after copying the panels, I have five panels here. So I'm gonna go up back to my deck and look, and it's nine foot 11, or let's just call it 10 feet to be to be easy. And so we're gonna hit uh, one, two, three, four, five panels, and we're gonna divide it by 10 feet. So how many inches is in 10 feet? 10, actually we'll go nine times 12 is 108 plus it was 11. So 119 inches total. We're gonna divide that by one, two, three, four, five. And 23.8 should be each width. So I'm gonna come back over here. Just do, I could just do one at, well, let me go back over here so I don't grab the wrong thing. And I'm gonna double click on one of these and let's just make this 23.8. There we go, hit okay. And I'm gonna do that for all of them. I'll go over here and get a different cross section elevation camera. One like this, and then I'm gonna move them over. I'll move this one all the way over here. Here we go, and then same with this, double click, 23.8. I'll highlight this, control C to copy, hit okay, and then I will just uh, use my arrow on my keyboard, move it over. I'm gonna go ahead and pause, and finish. Okay, so this is our finished uh, view from the cross-section elevation. You can see we have uh, all of this area filled with lattice, and then of course we have to do the other side. I'm gonna go through the same process for that. And then we'll worry about finishing up the, the outside of that uh, with lattice um, and we'll go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and complete this process again. I'll probably just take one of these and copy and paste it over there and uh, see if we can uh, get this done real quick. And then I'll, I'm going to pause, get that done and I'll be back. Okay, so front of the deck is done. I'm going to cover these areas up with lattice too. So um, same thing, I'm going to go through the same process. Go to my floor plan view. I'm gonna take one of these uh, lattices and sometimes you have to get off it and get on it again. And I'm just gonna paste that in there. I'm gonna rotate this around so it's facing that way, get it close to the building. Let's go over to the cross-section elevation camera. Uh, this one, that's not the cross-section. Yeah, there we go. I think we're in the right one now. There it is. We're gonna have to take this and of course adjust it. I need to come down. Probably have to hit, hold the control button sometimes to make things come down. I'm gonna line it up over here. And then um, I am going to do this. So I'm gonna bring it down to the height. I see that's a different, a different angle of the lattice and 
I don't think that's gonna look very good. So we'll have to make other panels. They're probably gonna be even smaller than these ones, but it'll give you that proportion. You know, you might be better off just making your own um, lattice or finding a different version, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. I like to do everything in these videos free. So we're gonna use the free one if we can. I'm just gonna take one of these instead and control C, control V, see if it lets me paste it. It does, and I'm gonna control, I'm gonna put this in place. And if I just put that, yeah, actually, if I put that in place and just overlap that panel, that's actually not even look that bad. So it might actually look better if I do it that way. So why don't we just go ahead and continue with that? I'll just do the whole edge like that. So uh, I'm going to go back to my floor plan view and do it. I'm going to pause for a minute. I'll go back. I'll reconvene when I Okay, so I got to the end of this side. And when you really think about it, what I should have done, it's had this whole length filled in with that. So uh when i did my math that is but i think we're gonna be okay if i just have to take this one panel and modify it by drag it out a little bit it won't look too bad i don't think it'll be noticeable in the grand scheme of things so we're just gonna go with that and then of course i have to go and um finish the rest of this uh this lattice work and i'm gonna have to do it the same thing on the other side so i'm gonna move around over here i'm going to uh you know take these panels do the same thing um Go to my other cross-section elevation camera. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the right one. I need to get, uh, let me go to floor plan. I need to get, I believe on this side. So that's elevation two. So elevation camera two, that's this one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, take this right here, control C, control V, I'm gonna paste. By the way, it's gonna give you that error message every time. Don't let that, don't let that slow you down. Just kind of keep on plugging away with that. and. Um, I am going to, uh, again, finish this side and then I will pick up recording. Okay, all three of the four sides are done. Now it's time to just kind of keep on wrapping around the back side. So we're gonna go back to our floor plan view and I'm going to select one of these, um, one of these pieces. I think I've got one there, Control C, Control V. I'm gonna click on the back here. Um, I'm gonna rotate it around so it points out that way. There we go. I'll get it kind of close to where it needs to be. Of course, you're going to get that every time you're going to get that little error message. And I'm just going to kind of line it up like that. And where's my elevation camera in the back? Uh, do I have one? I don't have one. So let's go ahead and create one. Cross section elevation point in the back there. And now we will work our way across this wall. I'm going to pause and I'll reconvene when I get that done. Okay, so we are complete. Uh, all of the lattice, let me go back to our camera view. We can see the entire house is surrounded in lattice. It's kind of a nice clean look. Uh, we need to do some stairs to go up to this. Let's type in steps. I think that's where they're found. These are frame stairs. That's what we want. These frame stairs are perfect for our deck. Let me go into the uh, floor plan view and um, just kind of put that, uh, put it somewhere about there. I don't like that label on there. I'm going to double click the stairs and um, open them up, go to label and hit suppress label. Hit OK. And let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like uh, over here. Uh, of course, we're floating in air. We got to fix that. Let's go back to our elevation view. Um, let's find the right. Well, this one will actually work. Um, I think I'm behind. I'm going to let's do it a different way. Let me get to the right. There we go. That's a good one. So elevation camera three is a good one. I'm just going to take the stairs, uh, hold the control key down, of course, and bring it down to the right level. And those stairs ought to be nice. Um, we can adjust it so it goes up to that, that height if we want. But uh, actually, I think this is fine. Let's go ahead and look at that. So there's our steps. I think what I want to do is I'm going to take the wood finish on these steps and put it on the deck as it looks better. So I'm just going to eye drop that and uh, start, let me get a better view here, start fixing all those uh, deck panels. So eye drop and then just paint all these deck panels to match. It looks, the what comes naturally on the deck is a little bit too red. Of course, with any of these videos, if there's a finish that you think you would like better, go ahead and put that on there. And there we go. So uh, we now have a deck and um, 
Yeah, it looks pretty good. So I think what we have left to do, uh, I have a couple of things. For one, I could I might as well finish up these windows right here. Uh, if you just watch this video to do the deck, there you have it. That's a simple deck. Well, hello and welcome back to what I feel will be the final chapter of this tiny house build. So we made it to the end. Let's talk about uh, a couple of finishing touches. Uh, for one, I'm looking at this. I can see I messed up the material right there. So I'm gonna add drop that and put this here. I also noticed a big, um, uh, a big deal that I forgot. And that is when I built this deck, sometimes when you ha have dormers and you put walls underneath, the walls underneath the dormer have a big effect on it. So if you put walls underneath and when you make a deck, it's technically walls. Here's what happened. Check out the um, dormer on the top of the roof. It's gone. I didn't even realize that it disappeared when I was working on on this. Um, but here, let me show you how to get that back because um, you're going to want the dormer back. We put all that work into the dormer. Let's get it back. So what I need to do is go to my floor plan view. And you notice there's this little outline of a rectangle. Guess what? That's your dormer. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on it and we're just going to move it backwards. I'm going to go a couple of ticks. And then I'm going to go, uh, or I'm on floor one. Let me go up to attic, and then you can see it reappeared, okay? So what we want to do at that point is we want to see how low can we put this, this dormer before it has a problem. I go a little bit more. I can keep on going until it does until it gives me an error. So I want it as low as possible. Oh, there we go. So that was, that was my limit. So I'm going to go back up a little bit again. That, and now you can see how the walls are formed. So we can go back down to first floor view, look at a perspective full overview, and there it is. Um, that was important. One more thing I wanna do, I'm gonna just finishing touches here. I want a window right here. The reason I want a window right here is because let's go ahead and do a, a full camera real quick and look down this hallway. This hallway is kind of dark, it like needs some light. I mean, I, of course you could put some artwork and stuff. I'm gonna get over to this physical uh, camera real quick too because I don't, um, know why this monitor does that to me but it does so i want to put a window right here in this hallway i'd give it a little bit more natural light so i will put that window right about there so um looking at floor plan i think what i'm going to do is go ahead and uh, take one of these existing windows probably this one from the second floor go to uh Got my menu over here. I forgot about that. So I'm going to go to next. There we go. Now, once I have that, I can hit control C to copy it. Then I can go back down to my first floor and hit control V to paste. And then I should have my window. And then I'm going to go ahead and look uh, at the perspective flow overview and see what we did there. Should have a window there, but of course, look where it is. It's in a weird spot. Let's go ahead and put it somewhere where it's supposed to be. I'll probably want to uh, line it up with these doors right here. And um, looking at it from the front, you know, I don't know if there's, a, I guess there's a specific dimension we should put there, but um, let's go ahead and do a, uh, a uh, cross-section elevation real quick and get the height of this window correct, because I kind of want to line it up with these, these ones. Uh, so I'll go down a little bit. That's a lot better. You can see it's almost lined up with that piece of siding. And I also want to make this, you know, this window is kind of condensed a little bit because of uh, where it was up here in the dormer. I think I want to make this window a little bit bigger. Uh, 32, 32 is pretty nice. Um, let's double click it and also put, let's put a light in there because I think that would look nice. There we go and hit okay. And now let's go back to our perspective full overview and you see what we got here. It should, there it goes. So it should make those, uh, those changes. And um, another thing I noticed uh, in the back here is I never fixed the material here. So that would be an easy fix. Of course, this video is all about, you know, final touches. Okay, that's good. And another thing I noticed, it's actually my daughter pointed out to me, that uh, in this bathroom, no, it's there right now. There's a sink right there, but I hadn't put a sink in there. I did this whole vanity and never put a sink in there. So I added a sink in there. Um, you can do a camera so you guys can take a look. I think I want to say I put a vessel sink in there or something, which looks way too big um probably couldn't put a you know regular drop down sink in there um this this we'd have to modify the the cabinet and stuff so i don't think we want to do that but um 
that's something to, to also put in there for a finishing touch. And then uh, finally, on the outside of this house, we've got this uh, wonderful deck out here, but it's kind of boring. There's no landscape or anything like that. So if you've never done any landscape or anything like that, um, we're going to kind of dive into that a little, a little bit. The first thing you would do normally in a landscape uh, to do landscape is you would come up here to floor plan view and you would go terrain, create terrain perimeter. But if we do that, watch what happens. Because remember how we did the the oddball stuff with the foundation because this doesn't really have a normal foundation because it might be sitting on a trailer and yada, yada, yada. So when I hit create terrain, uh, terrain perimeter, see that rectangle right there, watch what happens when I go to my perspective full overview. It does all kinds of wonky stuff, right? Um, and if I just had to lower the, the height of the terrain perimeter and everything else would be fine, I would do it. But it does weird stuff with the with the um, the lattice work, which you remember how much time we spent on that. So we don't want to mess that up. So the good part about terrain perimeters, you can do some stuff with it. Like you can you can come back here and put uh, you could put different elevation points in it and make it so it's not a perfect flat surface because that doesn't really uh, mimic reality very very well. But um, that's not what we're gonna do here. We're gonna go ahead and delete that. Go back to our perspective, so we're back to normal. And you see what happened. It, you see how it messed all that up. I'm gonna just hit Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, and now uh, Control Y. There we go. And we're back to the dormer being there, I believe. There we go. So um, there's a little trick we're gonna use to get around that problem. And basically, we're gonna use our um, our go-to, which is to create a polysolid. We're gonna make a polysolid landscape, which this isn't a, you know, a, a, a usual technique or anything, but I'm just gonna make a rectangle around this and um, let me go ahead, double click it and let's make it, uh, let's see. Let's go a height of like 12 inches. So we'll make it a little bit thicker. Is it okay? Let's see, what, let's see what, how that comes out. So there it is, our big concrete um, polysolid. I'm gonna double click it. And let's um, elevation at top. Let's try negative 12. Let's see how that works out for us. Is it okay? So it went down, but not enough. So I'll double click it again. Let's go negative 24. Hit okay. And we're getting close now. Um, Fine tune it in, it's the 24, let's go negative 26. Just looking at those steps, we're gonna get, we're gonna lower this until it's just the right, the right uh, depth. Let's go 28, get rid of one of those twos. I think we have it, so minus 28 is what gets this right. And then of course, um, I am going to go to my material slider material spray can rather, and I'm just gonna type in grass. And there should be a whole bunch of different grass materials you could choose from. I'll just pick, I like this one as grass too. I spray paint my poly solid and now pretty much looks like it did before with the uh, terrain perimeter. Only now it's at the right height, it didn't mess up my lattice. If I'm just doing this for the purpose of doing a render, uh, taking a still picture of this thing, um, make it look nice then yeah this is this would work for you if you're actually doing a um a site plan with the actual terrain and stuff like that you'd have to rig and roll some stuff um to make it work you could but that's what this lesson's about we're just kind of trying to finish this thing up other things that we need um i'm not sure that i put a uh, uh these railings on in the last video i think i might have done that afterwards but but that's just really easy guys we'll just go to um go to the floor plan view and you would just go right here to railings right next to the wall straight railing and all it is is drag a straight railing around there leave an opening where the steps were and come over here so i'm not going to go through that process again but that's pretty straightforward we get rid of some of these um these cameras um other things we can do we can start putting in some kind of a furniture or plants i put potted plant let's see what comes up with that nothing how about we just put in plants there we go uh here is all kinds of ideas for 
for shrubs and trees. A lot of these are pictures. Okay, so if we go right here to the core catalog. These are these are different trees that are in there um, that we can pick from, and they're just core catalog things. So we could put shrubs. If I go to, I go over here. I can, um, I can take these shrubs and. How about, how about some of that? Okay. So I'll come out here and uh, put one. I'll put a, maybe a grouping of these bushes over here. I do the same thing. A lot of times in landscaping, what you do is you try to kind of break up the, the, cool, the sharp edge corners of buildings. So this would accomplish that. Just putting some of these in the corner. I'm kind of doing them irregularly. And of course we have steps here, so we don't want to impede on those. I can kind of break this corner and putting like a mulch base for it would be nice, but you kind of need the terrain perimeter to do that. So you might not want to do that. Let's see what this looks like. All right, we have a bunch of bushes that are floating in the air. So what I really should have done, um, cause I am not going to uh, want to individually do all of those at the same time again don't don't erase your dimensions i'm just gonna um i'm gonna pick one let's see if i can't get them all at once maybe we can actually so uh let's go with the um finish floor to bottom let's go let's go 24 and see what that does to it to us Looking at these ones in the front here. We might just have to go to zero. Let's go ahead and just pick them from here. Oh, I think I grabbed something besides the bush. Let's go back over here again. That's why you have to use the correct view to open things up. Okay, let's go finish floor to top, uh, zero. That does. There we go. It should be all be zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of I'm gonna go to floor plan view and do it because it'll be easier. It's gonna start clicking on. I'm gonna hold shift to click the other bushes. Remember, there's other stuff you can pick by accident if you're not careful. Dimension lines and walls and that sort of stuff. So just be aware of that when you're selecting all these especially if you're doing a mass selection which i'm about to do right here like right there i just grabbed that wall i didn't want to do that so sometimes it's easier just to do a little area at a time so that's what i'm going to try to do just pick a little bit of the bush at a time i did it again <laughs> let me let me go ahead and uh i'll do these ones first nope keep on grabbing that whole wall I'm just going to do those ones and I'm going to come over here. Uh, zero is our finished floor at the top. Hit OK. I think this is the guy we, we needed to get. Here we go. And this will be zero. And then I can kind of scroll over. I'm panning over here. Remember to pan, you just push that middle scroll wheel down. Through these bushes and do them. I think I got all of them. Let's go ahead and take a look. You missed a few. This will be obvious which ones you missed because they'll be floating in the middle of the air. Like we missed that guy. So now at this point, it's easy to do it in 3D. As you can see which ones are um, are not at the right height. And I'll come around here. Let's go ahead and pick these guys. This one and this one. Open them up zero there we go There's something else I missed no I think I got them all so there is just kind of like the bushes you know I think I I think I deleted my my um my uh when I when I clicked on the bushes before I must have deleted that the poly solid that was our grass so um I'll do that again real quick Just pasting some bushes in here by the way i copied one that was already at the right elevation which that should have been the first thing i did um and re redid it now um i'll do this poly solid again real quick 
gonna wrap this up. Uh, here's a rectangle. Double click it. I wanna say uh, we made it 12 inches and negative 26 or something like that. I think that was right. Hit OK. Take a look. Uh, um, 26 was not enough. It was a little deeper than that. So let's go minus 28. Yeah, 28 is pretty good, although these bushes now seem like they're, they're cut off, so maybe 28 wasn't enough, so open it up. Let's go 31. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's pretty good. So that's pretty good, and I can come back in here with the grass again. Oh, let me get my material painter and do it that way. Uh, there's that same grass material. Okay. Let's paint that. There we go. We're back to where we were before. So I've got these bushes in here. Other things we can do, um, patio furniture. So uh, let's type in patio and see what comes up. So all kinds of stuff. How about this patio table and chairs? I will come over here to uh, my floor plan view and let's go ahead and put that up there. I think that's kind of, that looks kind of nice there. And we need some, um, maybe a couple potted plants. Let's type in plants. How about flowers? Let's type in flowers. I think that's uh, that's how you get these ones. I know that there's some flowers in a pot. You want to just type in pot. P O T. See if there's a flower in a pot. I think it. I think there is potted flower. that doesn't do it let's type in flowers see um, maybe in here we can find it it's I can't find the potted ones I don't know why hold on let me pause this and I'll find them and I'll let you know what okay so the way I'm doing it is I'm just gonna type in pot again and you'll get a whole bunch of them and what I want is this round pot I think that's one I'll just kind of put it on the deck over here and then I'm gonna double click it and make sure I check retain aspect ratio. And I'm gonna bump the size of this thing up because I want kind of a big pot. I hit okay. And then next I'm gonna type in flowers. And we're just gonna kind of make our own um, flower pot. So I I'm clicking on the folder for perennials and, and biennials. I guess that means it comes to every other year. And I'm gonna click this one right here. You can pick whatever ones you want, but I'm gonna pick that one. And I'm gonna come, kind of come to the side of that pot real quick. And then I'll double click that flower to open it up. And on the height, uh, make sure again, maintain aspect ratio, but I'm gonna go to like 34, make it bigger, hit okay. And then I'll just um, put these things together, kind of like that. Now I've got them together and I can, um, well, for one thing I can do this, I can just make that, uh, make an architectural block. And now it's together. I don't have to worry about it separating. And I can take this and put it over here to one side of the door. And then I'll control C, control V and paste it. Put another one over there. Let's take a look at what we got. So yeah, we got some flower pots there. And there's lots of other things we can do. One more thing I'm gonna put in here. I think I'm gonna put a tree. Let's see what kind of trees we have. Of course the trees, there's um, a whole bunch of different uh, ones to pick from. And you can of course adjust their height and stuff like that. But uh Try to pick something that's kind of interesting. This one says Acer 3. Kind of like that one because it, um, it's it got a good shape and color to it for what we're doing here. So let me put one of these little Acer. Remember, and keep in mind, this little outline, that's how big the, the tree is. So I'm about to resize it. If I don't put up right up against my house like that, it'll grow into the house. So I'm going to give it a little bit of space out here. Um, of course, remember, this is the purpose of this tree is just to make a nice render. So I'll put one there and I'll put one there. We'll see what they look like. There they are. So they're really kind of there for a render. If you look at it, it's kind of like a 2D picture. But when you turn, when you rotate around, they just kind of rotate around with you. Uh, one thing you can notice is, though, like they're floating in the air. So we're going to have to do a um, elevation camera to fix that. So uh, I'll just take the tree. Bring it down. It probably won't let you without holding control down. So I hold the control down and um, bring the tree down to the level where it needs to be. 
and I also probably um, double click trees. I'll make this one um, a little bit bigger. We don't want two trees that are exactly the same. That's pretty good. And then look at our perspective flow review and see what we have. I think we have um, something that looks like a pretty good finished product. There's lots more things you could do with landscaping at it, but I think I've taken you as far as I need to take you on this uh, tiny home journey. I hope you've enjoyed this project. I'll probably be doing another tiny house down the road. I think this seems to be something that people uh, seem to like. So I like to do the things that are popular. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and come on back for more tutorials.